saw your GoFundMe. We're going to get into all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, uh, I figured that would be discussed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, you know, we're just going to have fun with it, but it might get a little deep and dark at points. Obviously. How could it not? <laughs> how could it not? But we're going to have fun with it anyway. I know how you are, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, I laugh it, at pain. <laughs> the pain will be fun. Everyone else can enjoy our pain. That was my good buddy Mark Cirillo there. And I want to give you fair warning that in this episode of the Offstage Acting Podcast, we really get into it. The good, the bad, and the ugly truth about the business we are in and love. God bless Mark for being brave enough uh, and open enough to share his experiences with us on the show. I think it took a lot of courage. He would probably disagree because that's just how he's built. But I want you and him to know that I really admire and appreciate it and that he has also helped me to speak out about some fairly uncomfortable things just because he was able to do it. Mark and I have a shared experience where we were pursued quite aggressively by a person who was in a position of uh, trust and authority when we were young acting students at university. In fact, it was the same person, actually, so there's that. And of course, we're not the first that have had this happen to them. And it's becoming more and more common to hear these kinds of stories and to share them and to bring them out into the light, which is great. And we certainly share and bring it all to bear, uh, hopefully so that others won't fall into the traps that we fell into. But it's not all doom and gloom. We talk about Mark's fun and quirky career, his personal niche, uh, a niche that you may not even have known existed. Uh, and Mark is just a big ray of sunlight in general. And anyone who knows him will tell you that. And you'll get the chance to find out for yourself and support Mark. The man needs a roof and you can help. The details of which are in the show and down below. So without wasting any more time, here is our very own, the lovely and talented, my friend and yours, Mark Cirillo. The one thing we do is I'll show your clip and stuff, Mark. And we're going to talk about stuff and then we're going to talk about you behind your back. And then we'll introduce you. And then we'll talk about you to your front. <laughs> well done. Sounds like a plan. It is a plan. Everything I do by definition is a plan. Oh. Including this. Bam, bam, bam. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Bam, bam. Da -ba -da. Welcoming everybody back to the Offstage Acting Podcast. Hello, hello. What do we do here? We have fun talking about everything acting. That's right. Tons of fun, nothing but. Indeed. And like we said last time, we are on the boat sailing the ocean of fun. The acting Sailing fun. the ocean of fun with your captain, Todd Kramer, and my cabin boy, Jay Riem. Yes. <laughs> I've upgraded hello. you from, from deckhand. Cabin Deck boy is an important role on a ship. I honestly don't know the difference between the two, but I, I cabin accept. boy is like the little the little boy that right, that goes along on the on the vessel, and then he takes care of all the stuff the captain needs. Like he cleans the captain's quarters and oh, makes sure he he's doesn't take care of the ship. He takes care of the captain. The captain he's like the yeah, the yeah. bitch as yeah, one might much, say if one were crass. I might have to yeah, bleep that as well. But it, you're gonna even have to little... quack the spelling out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, wow. the, the cabin okay. boy. Does all the, who knows what the cabin boys used to do? Anyway, yeah, wow. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard Hi. is the is the point. You're looking especially adorable today. Can I just say? I don't know Am why. Am I? Yeah. You no, look... you're. N no, I'm not. No, oh, I'm do. not. I don't know it's why. It's, it's did you shave? Did yoga. Oh, no, you did yoga. I, you're looking fresh. I've been doing yoga and Pilates and doing fitness routines. So Good. I've been taking care of the bod. Taking Keeping care of the body. Keeping limber. Very important as an actor, isn't it? And the steam room and sauna, yes. Oh, well, Actually, excuse me. Yes. You've got nothing Indeed. but time and money, huh? Well, I mean, I have put time and money into an expensive gym near me, so now I have like, Oh, that's right, yeah. So now I have to, like, use it. Use it, be, yeah, I know. Yeah. Get your money's worth. <laughs> but honestly, uh, worth it, I think. I I feel pretty good. My brain feels so busy, though. So I'm, But my body feels good. So that's... Your brain probably always feels busy. I have a feeling, by the way, and this is not to call you out on any level, without judgment, but... You know, based on what I know about you and, and Justina also kind of 
we 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 had some conversations about you. Um, mm. ADHD, any of those letters? Yeah, yeah, resonate with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, a dynamic, huge dude. That's who I am. And I, a lot of my <laughs> oh, friends did you just make that, that up, or is that what you always you've kept that one in the arsenal? I should have said a dynamic, humorous dude, but you know what? Huge is fine. I'm huge, but yeah. yes, I'm sure many people are. If I were to tell anyone that I have ADHD, not a single person would bat their eye. Nobody not, would doubt that. No. No, 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 no. And many I've had friends tell me they're like, Jay, you have ADHD. And I'm like, okay. They're like, Jay, you you're on the spectrum. And I'm like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, 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 definitely on the spectrum. Definitely on the spectrum. Great. That's Rain Man. Oh. That's my autistic Rain Man guy. Um, yeah, because you can't sit still and you know, you have all the symptoms. But but Justina has it as well too. She recently sort of diagnosed, um, it took a while. To figure it out um, yeah getting a professional diagnosis is like a whole it takes it's money. important and it takes money and time and it's hard to get one yeah um but anyway and i'm glad you're keeping the tool sharp because as i was gonna say as an actor i'm also trying to keep up uh, with the the yoga and things like that and because you never know when you're going to be at a moment's noticed kind of moments noticed moments yeah, yeah yeah notice in a moment's notice yeah um be required to be physically active doing something yeah. you know and if you've been sitting around doing nothing so that's all part of keeping the the tool sharp as it were so good for you absolutely good for you look Thank great you. look great and i also since i'm in a complimentary mood i just want to throw a little shout out to our boy andy reed uh who's doing oh. a bang up job he just Thank you, andy. Uh, he you know uh, I, he keeps all the little threads in his head i don't know how he does it you've seen him do it right jay I, I have and wow this is a new this is a new hot toddy that we're seeing and it's a new is, side he's our, it's a new side he's our co-director yeah that's his I'm not sure I like it co ship captain at this boy point Andy I probably won't either way yeah he he does I take advantage of it while you can he and Todd are always talking tech tweaking yeah tweaking and teching and doing a lot of things I know to the audiences this looks like a little dinky simple podcast. Not a lot of bells and whistles. Any child could get on with their, their, <laughs> their, their. Any child star, come on, you you do it. Right. Any 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 seven year old with a um, a Playmobil podcast, whatever can put it. But it's not. It's it's actually quite technically challenging to do even just a few of the little things that we do here for you for the for the audience. It's out of respect and love and admiration for the audience just to give you that little extra. And that's uh, mostly provided by Andy Reid. Um, eventually, you know, it takes a lot to get to get him to do stuff. But once he okay. does it, um, he okay. does. Well, I want to be honest. Anyway, and if you're thinking about, by the way, by the way, if you're thinking about setting up a podcast on your own and you don't know where to go, you can go to uh, reeddigital.com. Boy Andy, our own boy Andy, setting up his uh, his own little uh, consultation business is quite reasonable um, right now. He actually pays you uh, to come and ask him questions. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, it's r e i d digital dot com, and you can go check him out and get a little bit of help and support if you're thinking about starting a podcast. So that's a good deal. That's going on the show notes. Let's send uh, tell him Todd Kramer sends you. He'll give you a seventy eight percent discount if you tell him <laughs> if you say off stage acting. <laughs> Off stage acting sent him. <laughs> a highly specific number. <clears throat> highly specific. We love yeah, that's what we agreed on. Acting. He wanted, he wanted, I wanted 85 and he was like, no. And we, we negotiated. He's a tough negotiator. He negotiates like a, like an Arab trader. Um, okay. Um, everybody, is that so, stereo? Is that, a, is that a stereo? <laughs> I, I, I'll I just be honest. That. An Arab trader, I have no idea. They're uh, tough I, negotiators, those guys. I, I have no uh, connection. I'll probably to have that. to bleep that. There's nothing. There's uh, it, that might be a stereotype. That might anyway. be too. Yeah, indeed. Remember, well, folks, I'm of an era. I'm not young and woke. Okay, listen. I want to. Let's move on. Yes. Before I get into real trouble, start talking mm -hmm. about all kinds of. Did you know that I went to university? I did know you went to university, and I'm pretty sure I remember which one you went to. Okay. It Tell was, me. It, it was. It was in New York City, and it was Marymount, right? Or. You got There's half M, of it, right? right? There's an M. Manhattan. You got Marymount. Wait oh a my minute. God, I, my... I got it wrong. I thought it wasn't. Where's my. Where's the what? stupid. Oh, this one. There. Okay, Mary... go. Manhattan. Go. Loyola, you... Three. Yeah, Loyola, Marymount. Loyola, Marymount. Good. Loyola, and what Marymount? was location? Manhattan. No, Manhattan. It wasn't you're, from... you're the guy that. You did New York. I did LA. I did LA. 
I told Los you, there's Angeles. A, there's a Ma Marymount Manhattan University. There's a Marymount Army. everywhere. Everywhere that there's Catholics, there's a Marymount. I see. <laughs> Jesuits. So you went to a Catholic I did. college? I did. University I run by Jesuits. Him. I say Jesuit. Which Jesuit. are of, okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the scholars of the Catholic Church. I am... I see. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of only half Catholic, let's say. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, my father was a Catholic, but I'm uh, sorry about that. I wasn't um, raised Catholic. But yeah, right, I went so to, you I, went to Marymount in, in LA. In Los Angeles, right by the airport. People will know it's the big LMU on the side of the hill, Playa del Rey. You head up the hill and you see LMU and you can tell people LMU and they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that's cool. Um, more famous probably for its beautiful campus than it's, although these days it's really improved. Um, and they've built up a lot of schools. Anyway, it's a good university, but the, my point is, is that I made a lot of friends there, believe it or not. But I believe um, it, not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't say, I mean, a lot. Um, and I'm really excited about this episode because we're gonna do an interview and we're going to do an interview with a good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine. Love it. Who I've known um, since, yeah, from university. Now keep in mind that I'm a, I'm a little bit older than he is, and I still think of him as a kid. So there's there's like a thing there in my head because I oh, was right. I think I was a junior and he came in as a freshman, and so to me he's always like the kid. Um, I see. Even though he's like you're the, laying the ground for when you call him <laughs> kid several times during no, this podcast. Not, he's forty. He's in his mid late forties, I guess. Early forties. Right. Just outing his age. Thirty five. <laughs> Thirty five. He's fifteen years old. He came to school at like fourteen. No. Yeah. He, he came to university when university he was at 10. seven He's years 10. old. He was a genius, school genius. I was also very young in university, by the way. I graduated from university when I was 16. So, um, wow. yeah, because oh. I was that smart. No, that's a joke because I used to lie about my age a lot. Do, do you lie about your age? You're not at that age yet. I'm not, no, I don't lie. But what I do do is not tell people the truth. And then when they make an assumption, I just don't say otherwise. Yeah, well, that's that's fair. I was lying about my age from a very early age. I could get away with it, especially because I looked younger. You, oh, you looked younger. I could imagine you looking like grizzled and old when you were like 14 or 16. No, no you looked you looked like a babe. I did. I was a late bloomer. I didn't blossom until I was like 21. Yeah, same. Really, and, and like- Still phew, waiting. And shut up. Uh-huh. Yeah, you still like a babe. Um, but I think actors tend to lie about our age because we go playing age. So that's a big yes. thing. You don't want people to really know your actual age, especially with our guest who also looks very young and has always looked young. And that's part of the reason why I always think of him as a kid as well. He plays young, uh, mm. not so much anymore because he, he looks like Grizzly Adams. Um, he's adjusted <laughs> his, <laughs> he okay. plays, now he can play like truck drivers and Alaska mountain men and stuff. He's a oh, great. I'm excited to see his uh, his reel. That's right. Oh, thank you. Gosh, we're gonna watch his reel, for real, for real, real, for real, for wow. real. Okay, wow. I gotta set this up. Um, well, I'll I'll tell you. His name is Mark Cirillo. Holy. Okay. But I I actually think it's probably pronounced Ch Chirillo, like if in the, in the real sense. You know how I'm about names. Yeah, yeah, you tell people how to pronounce their names. That's right. Well, because Italian, it's not Cirillo, Cirillo. Ch -ch He'll tell us. He'll, if he knows. Yes, Todd. He might be he Dutch. He'll tell us. <laughs> <laughs> he might be, um, no, he what are you? German. Norwegian. He might be Norwegian. No, 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 I'm not Norwegian. I'm German. I found out from you. I'm, uh... You're welcome. Thank you so much. Okay. Are you ready for the great Marcus Cirillius? Um, I am indeed. That's Greek, actually. Um, this is. He's, he does comedy and he does drama. You're going to see he does, um, and he's sort of cornered the market in a very specific niche, which- I uh, oh, love it. Yeah, he can tell us about. But here here he is being hysterical. Let's hope I get it right. Uh, Mark Cirillo. My name is Robbie Klein, and I'm Move it over, Shaker move it over. Ohio. Next! Nicholas, by the way. I'm allergic. I'm, I'm Herbert. <laughs> nice to meet you, Herbert. What's up, beardos? <laughs> Scruffy. <laughs> Puffy. Why so huffy? What was his name again? Tweaky. Twitchy. Ted. I noticed he got real excited about the powder in the bathroom until he realized it was talc. This is Nicholas. And that is Pancho. Oh. Nice lizard. Actually, he's a bearded dragon. Oh. A dragon? Like Khaleesi. 
Yeah, it's like the way Ian constantly <laughs> says, you know what I'm saying, even though it's clear, we all know what he's saying. Or how I will elaborate on a point until I can turn the conversation back to me. What? What are you doing? Well, obviously I've wandered into a preteen slumber party. You're certainly dressed for it. Next. Okay, guys, focus. Focus. Mark is summer. mad at the situation. He's not mad at you. I can be mad at both. Don't tell me what I'm mad at, woman. Oh, where are you going, Stoner Spice? To throw up? Who are you kidding? All those years of binging, you never learned how to purge. What am I supposed to do? I've never smoked. Technically, you still haven't. Oh my god, are you calling the police? I'm calling to cancel our reservations. Oh, great. Now we don't even get mimosas. Bryce is why we don't have nice things. And my relief must come from love. Next. I want tell to hear it. it. We're just talking about tell it. Tell it. Good legs. Tell it. Tell it. Listen to me. I'm only gonna say this once. Okay. Fine. I'll stop talking and you talk. I'll be quiet and I will. Will you marry me? Word. Wait. What now? Like, how are we gonna like do this? And what about your work? I asked I... my boss for a transfer. They have another clinic there, and they accepted. Oh my God. <laughs> But it, um, it can't be that easy, right? I mean, we have to talk about this. I just, I never thought, oh. Yes, 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 of course, yes. He said yes. Oh. I'm gonna marry him. I'm gonna marry him. Aren't there more important things that we should be discussing other than guys, clothes, and drinking? I love that jacket. Seriously. Seriously. I love that jacket. You can all just HBO go f yourselves. Whoa. I'm glad that was beeped. Bye, Bye Nicholas. Nicholas. Drink the mimosa. Bye, Bye Miss. I can't talk right now. I'm about to pass out. <laughs> there he is, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Let's bring him in. Snapchat. Oh, Don't. I forgot. There's a bit more. Oh, well. Welcome. That's I don't Great. know that that stupid cheer. <laughs> How you doing, Mark? On now? You're on. <laughs> Enough. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you. And thank you for looking so particularly adorable today. Jay, just for you, that's Mark. for you, Jay. Doesn't he look adorable? You don't know what he normally yeah. looks like, yeah. but okay, yeah. thanks, Todd. Um, how how's it been? Mark and I have known each other for. Well, he doesn't like to say his age and stuff. So since for a decade, still lying about my age. You're still lying. You're getting away with it. I guess you can. You got no, hair down to your like shoulders. This always ruin it. <laughs> Listen, I got stories about how IMDb ruined it for me. Somehow they got hold of my birthday, and that was the end of that. And that was like, oh, and I even wrote them, and I I tried to threaten legal action, and they were like, sorry. I heard about one or two that had gotten my IMDb to change. Because basically, yeah, no, I think it's a new. How long ago was that? Because I think they changed their policy, and you can just have your age not shown now. Oh, really? Okay. Because of all the boy, like people were really upset. Like, yeah, know, because it interferes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've heard about a few. I had a friend of mine who's an attorney write a letter. I wrote a letter. I just got wow. back these standard. Pa yeah, yeah. Because all of a sudden, I'm I'm being outed. As <laughs> so old, to speak. so to speak. But then yeah, you get to this, you get kind of at a certain age where you're like, ah, well, what difference does it make? I think it's the gap between 30 and 50 where you're still able to kind of fudge and you can work in there and you don't know if they might say, we're looking for 45, but you're only 37. You can age yourself up or they're looking for 40 or 35, but you're 45 or 42. You can age yourself down. You know, it's. Um, but it's, it's just really better not to say because why put anything on it? Why let right. them think something about you? So it was always a stupid policy of IMDb. It but IMDb a, is also like a company out of England that wasn't Hollywood based at all from what no, I know. Really? IMDb is yeah. English? It was a fan site. Yeah, it's, a, it's and now it's, it's like the official like a Wikipedia. Yeah, Hollywood meant, site. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just meant to be a database. Is. It's literally yeah. called IMDb, the database of just everything to do with entertainment. And so they were collecting data from wherever, data, data. Okay. Um, Weirdly, they had my wrong age forever. And it was um, like a few years younger. Was it in But your I favorite? was like, it's not enough. It's not young enough. Right. It's, you, you're, you're like, you're lying wrong. 
Like, <laughs> you're not like, lying by enough. I need a bigger lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not lying. Well, uh, the problem is that all the aggregate sites take from IMDb, so it's out there no matter what you do anyway, even if it wouldn't exactly. be on IMDb, the other sites. Exactly. So, so I have uh, several ages all over the internet. <laughs> yeah, so that's even better. Mysterious. Then the mystery... I read an interview with River Phoenix once where he, when he was alive, and he, when we were in college, actually, like I think it was my freshman or sophomore oh, yeah. year when he died. And um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, he he used to just make up his entire backstory every interview he did. He would do a totally different backstory. Like, oh, he would just make oh, yeah. shit up. He was oh, like, it's that, fun. Yeah, that's right. I remember, yeah, because he had a, there was wow. a bunch of stories. Him and his brother, barefoot, growing up in hippie communes and then other yeah. stories about coming from all kinds of weird backgrounds and stuff. And Yeah. Yeah. yeah I come from a Catholic background like you. Keep him guessing. Kind of. What are you, huh? I come from a Catholic background like you, kind of. Do you? Kind of okay. I mean, you weren't really raised Catholic. No, I, no, no, I'm not Catholic. Unfortunately, was I just went a to little the... offense to all Catholics. Okay, now let's talk Absolutely. about Mark. Let's get down to brass tacks, the real yeah, deal. Yeah. Where do you come from? I guess I don't know where you're actually born. I am currently where I come from. I'm in Windsor, Connecticut, right now. Oh, you're in? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Windsor is the first town ever established in Connecticut. You're welcome. Wow. Well, we have a I'm Windsor here. Down. I'm surprised it's not New Windsor. You know, there's a Windsor in England. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Quite famous, quite that's famous. That's a good point. Yeah. More famous than your Windsor, I think, probably. <laughs> okay, so you're a Connecticut Yankee. Um, and you uh, were raised Catholic. Ooh. Difficult yes. childhood like that? Was it tough? Um, I mean, difficult. I mean, I was bullied a lot as a yeah. kid, um, especially in elementary. Well, kind of all the way through. By, by senior year, I'd sort of come in my own and I just didn't care. I spent all my time in the art department and, mm. and in the theater department. Mm. And yeah. that was, so you had yeah. one at school. That's good. Yeah. And it was run by my cousin, um, oh. second cousin, Ernie. So he looked more like a, uh, an uncle. Right. And um, Ernie Cirillo was a local actor uh, in like the Hartford area in Connecticut and was oh. well known for like doing lots of plays and everything. Okay. And he also taught English and ran the the, the drama stuff um, at my high school. Okay. So he was sort of my first, the first person that really Mentor like and introduced me yeah, into all the acting. And took care of you a bit. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. I was in it. It was a small town Nepo baby. Yeah. Because he would put me in plays <laughs> even though I sucked. Ernie's kid small cousin, town. whatever the whatever this mark is. I was terrible. Were you terrible? I was terrible. Yeah. Oh no. Were you what yeah. made you terrible? Out too outgoing, too hammy, or too too shy? You strike me as you might have been shy. Um, yeah, it, it was weird because I do have that weird dichotomy yeah. where I'm sort you're, of open about everything, but, but at the same yeah. time, when all eyes are on me, I can sometimes freeze up. Yeah, uh, it's an odd thing, yeah. isn't it? Um, so, now, yeah, did you go to? About? Did you go to Catholic school? Was like your high school? Was it a Catholic school? No, I went to public high school, and it was oh, amazing. Yeah, hmm. Windsor okay. Public School uh, was phenomenal. We had this huge art department that. Like you walk through what looked like a normal door and hallway. And then it was like you walk in and there's like a hallway and these ceramics, a ceramic section to the right where you like with kilns and you could like fire stuff. And then you keep it's walking. Kilns? And, the, and then the whole yeah. Art and then there was like a room with like desks that came up for sketching. And amazing. then you went down these little stairs where it opened to a patio. And and then there was like another <laughs> section of the art room. We had three art teachers. Plus the woman who ran the art department for the high school and the junior high. And I have no idea if it's still like that now, because, you know, they keep cut, cutting funding to arts everywhere, mm -hmm. um, which is all that saved my life in high school. If I didn't yeah. have... My high school, by the way, had like a an anonymous weapons drop and a constant police presence. <laughs> You know that just to give you. <laughs> well, I did hear that my, my, I did hear that my high school has like metal detectors now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think wow. they all do. They all do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and you because all my teachers have left, um, but I'm still friends with my main. Yeah, because they're all dead or old and retired because you're an old yeah. guy. Well, that too. Yeah. Now we've outed you as being old. -er. <laughs> 
if you um, couldn't tell. <laughs> um, am I, am I, I, I don't want to out you now, but you are a, a gay man. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked really of, hard. Bit, that. That's a bit, a bit of a joke. Mark is like the most screaming gay guy you could meet. But what always impressed me was that you came to school, like a lot at, in university. A lot of the young men and women, even probably, I guess, that were of the homosexual persuasion, uh, found that time in school twenty eighteen to twenty two was kind of the time to come out. So I remember a lot of guys coming at, and trying to front like they were straight, even though everybody kind of understood. Yeah. And they all flooded out of the closet yeah. after they graduated. <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Or, like or, all these guys. Oh, it's, yeah, it, easily by the time they graduated. If not, it was like over a summer at their sophomore year. So they came back junior year and like, hello. And it was a complete metamorphosis. And you go, oh. Huh. I did that. My freshman year, I knew when I was 16, when I lost my virginity to a woman. Yep, we're telling all. Um, all right. And but I didn't, when I went to college and I knew it was a Catholic school, but I really liked the yeah. campus and and, um, and and it felt kind of right. It was a smaller school at the time. And so way smaller than like USC and UCLA. I also knew I wanted to get like 3000 miles away from my family so I could be myself. Yeah, um, that's what we're, that's why I'm fair. asking some of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Small town, Windsor, Connecticut, you're pretty, different yeah yeah and my and my family though was like so high they're like oh he's going to a catholic school like that was gonna they'll straighten him out better yeah, yeah. they'll fix it <laughs> but then sophomore year after my after that summer where i had my first boyfriend at like 19 um that's when i came back and and came out it's also after sort of the incident which we'll talk about whenever you yeah want. But, um but that happened my freshman year. Which so really you didn't sucked. really know that you were gay until teenage, late teens. Yeah, I was like den the denial was strong. The denial, in me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you may <laughs> like, not have had I, any. Er Ernie wasn't uh, helping you in any any way, was he? <laughs> Discover that. No, not with anything like that. Yeah. No. I no, mean, I just mean did. like I was too scared in high there school. There wasn't anybody around that was like out. Certainly no. not in the '90s in Windsor, Connecticut. Yeah, that's so there right. Was no, yeah. no, no example. Yeah, there really wasn't. I remember it's so funny. I was just asking my mom because she's still friends with like the family of this girl I knew, who um, her best friend. She's a few years older than me, but in high school I used to see her with this guy, and I was like, "Oh, he's gay. I know he's gay." And like, I've never found out what happened to him. So I was going to ask because I kind of looked at him and I was like. Oh, I like his style. Uh, he wore a lot of turtlenecks, which in Connecticut, that was pretty common. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> cool. In the 90s, turtleneck. Yeah. Oof. And he always carried his books um, upright in front of him. I don't know. If, oh, there's my hand. Like, so like the spines would be like here. Uh. And so it was like he's walking with like the books up outright. I don't know how to make this make sense. Here's my phone. Yeah. So he'd carry his books sort of like this up against his chest. Oh, right. And I Regally, thought that was so an interesting. Air of, yeah, an air of yeah. uh, aristocracy. I don't know where right? that came yeah. from, but I, I might it. have oh. to start doing that. If I carry a book, I'm going to do that from now. On. Great. Do you carry a lot of books now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Does anybody? Yeah, I'll just ca yeah carry books around. But I arms. will. I will. If that if you think that makes an impression, I'll try it. Seems smart. <laughs> what a weird. What an interesting. Yeah. Was the spine facing the audience? So was, is that the, or, well, that's the thing is, I don't, I don't remember. I feel like yeah. they might have been like sideways. I can picture it. I can like picture it. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Do you I like my picture. example, my phone? Like, I that's think the modern day equivalent. Down, he like used to carry spine, his phone like. like, like his hand. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting like the impression himself. of like fast access, right? Like whenever he want, he could just like flip open the book and yeah, of licking his, his fingers and sort of flipping, it, and it's just, right like, there by his face. Walk around, so he could just anyone like, has mm. a question? Oh, yeah, he can refer to his book, or right. if he has thirty seconds to kill while waiting in the queue for something, yeah, he can quick just, reference, like, quick, quick just, read, just pick up where he left off. Yeah, very. I scholastic. think Jay might have cracked it. Maybe that mm. was it. He just. I think that was it. It's this. Yeah. It was the turtleneck that I relate to that. So this guy, you had a, a little like low key crush on, I guess, or you I'm just were sure fascinated by the like sexually attracted to him, or if I just thought like, right? Huh? You're, no, you're gay. You're gay. I already. might be like that. Gay, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because he yeah, and I knew what I liked to look like look at, um, but 
I, I was like, but I love girls so much. Like, I might not be gay. I really love women. <laughs> and then I was, then I had sex and I was like, oh, no. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. So now you come to LMU. You know that you want to be an actor, right? At yeah. that point. So you go yeah, theater. Pretty you go, age. Right. And you chose LMU knowing they had a theater department, obviously. Was it because of, or was it just like that? There it is. You got LA, you got Catholic, and you got a theater department. And that kind of ticks enough boxes. Right. And everybody. I actually, I also, just because I've, I've always sort of been a visual artist as well since I was a kid, mm -hmm. I like checked out their, they had a really cool sort of like art department too. Mm -hmm. Like art and dance were all yeah, they did, yeah. the building. And it was the dance cool. department was great. It was run by- And I ended people. up working at the art gallery on campus, like oh. pretty much all four years that I was there. Okay. As part right. of my That's work cool. study. And yeah, grant. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Then the troubles began. Well, yeah. I have, you know, honestly, I think all the time, like, I don't, I mean, I think there was like a break, but I never understood why I stayed there. Um, yeah. After all that. Yeah. So shall I sort of explain a bit? Shall I start? Yeah, because I mean, well, maybe. Or. I, I, well, maybe. And but have you shared your experience at all with this? Um, I, this I, show? Not publicly, no. Okay. Um, so here. Because <laughs> you have an experience even before mine. Yeah, that I think you tried to warn me about, but it might have been a little too late. Like it had already sort of. Yeah. So I was pulled aside by a couple friends of m guys who were older than me, at oh, some wow. point. Yeah. Um, and I won't say their names because no point in it. But there's one of them is still friends of, with me all these years later, um, and I was kind of flattered because I think I was a freshman, maybe sophomore, and they were seniors juniors or seniors. So they were a couple of years ahead for sure. And, um, I kind of admired them, you know, they're, they're bigger guys, uh, talented, they were doing stuff, theater guys. Um, and as you do, you look up to them and they pulled me aside. Hey, Todd, um, let's go out to lunch. I want to take you out to lunch. I you didn't like, take me to lunch. I didn't. I just pulled you aside, <laughs> pinned you on, in a sorry, corner and sorry. said, listen, boy, you're in trouble. You're in trouble here. Um, a lot of stuff happening. We're gonna we're gonna get deep. I think we're gonna get into it here, um, because it it needs to be exposed out into the light of day for for many reasons. But the the long and short of it is, they pulled me out. They they had me lunch, at lunch, and they said, "Listen, we understand." And I'm gonna say his name because I don't I don't really care. I agree. Right? Yeah, I think I people need to. Yeah. So th there was a new a newish professor at Loyola who had come into the theater department, whom everybody had really respected. He was actually, in retrospect, quite young. I think he's only a little bit older at the time than Jay. It was young 30s, right? Mm. Um, and very respectable, very funny, um, very knowledgeable theater professor, kind of the new theater professor. And we all adored him because the rest of the staff at the time were old nuns. There was an old alcoholic. I mean, old, 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 and old, terrible. Emmett Jacobs, who God rest him, was just a remember him. He was a. I got some stories about Emmett that would rock your world. So you you understood like, oh boy, you know, Sister Judith, and there was just a ton of old folks, and then this fresh ray of light, um, in the form of Doctor Ron Marasco. There it is. I've said his name, um, and everybody liked him, uh, and wanted to be his his pal um clearly he was gay there was no question about that um because uh, he was very flamboyant a lot of there i remember there was a lot of sort of controversy as as you do when you're young you sort of talk about these things and i remember people going no i think he's asexual and it was like i think the women wanted to believe he was asexual. that was such a catholic school <laughs> thing yeah like they just didn't want it they were like because yeah. gay is bad so he can't be that right and he just, so, he's not interested in sex at all or any. Right. So yeah. he must so just must not just have, be. Yeah. yeah. He's like he a priest. A, who's like just, a priest. Like <laughs> right. all the priests we've known yeah. growing up. He's, instead that of dedicating. Yeah, no yeah, who don't have any. any and then lose their minds and rape children. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there was the, the kind of idea that, yeah, he's dedicated. Like a priest has dedicated his life to God. Ron has dedicated his life to theater. <laughs> you you kind of go, I uh, doubt it. 
So these boys, my my friends at the, uh, who weren't friends at the time, they pulled me aside, had lunch. They said, look, we see that Ron has taken an interest in you. Essentially, this is a conversation. And I was like, yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely pulled me aside and pulled me into his office a few times, which at the time you found quite flattering because students were clamoring to have attention from him and things. And if he pulled you aside and he'd give you a, a play to read or he'd talk to you about theater and he'd, you know, get really deep and you thought, oh man, I'm getting a lot of, you know, I'm getting a lot of value out of this relationship, you know, and I'm, I'm one of the chosen ones. I don't know. It was kind of this grooming thing that was going on. You know, he's like, you felt, Absolutely. you felt special, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they had told me essentially, and I don't know if I even told you this before when we've talked, but that it had happened to them. Cause I sort of said, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, no, trust me. He tried it on with me. He tried it with so-and-so, you know, I he tried it with both of us and when we didn't, you know, and he was very aggressive about it and we, we, we had to really back out and things like that and, and get away from him. And he even sort of, you know, did some things to punish us for not, uh, you know, I don't know, reciprocating his advances or whatever it was. So I was on the alert from there on. And um, for the next uh, couple of years, I went through quite a process with him and his advances, which were consistent. I mean, to the point of, and I'm building up because then Mark's going to tell us, and we're going to talk about what happened to you because it's all related, but just so. So far, very similar. Yeah, so far similar and the audiences will hear, you know, we're all going to hear the similarities. Um, so it was things like, can you, uh, he bought a new condominium and he wanted to show me his condo. And he's like, come, come take a ride with me, you know? And it was like, okay. Uh, okay. He wanted to take me his spot to take a, a young uh, man, a young boy. Cause I was just a boy. He'd take a uh, hamburger heaven. He figured out that if you went to hamburger heaven, I think was the name of it, which was a, uh, a, a restaurant. Like a, it, it wasn't burgers so much. It was more it like was a, hamburger heaven or hamburger haven. Hamlet, hamburger, like Hamlet. Hamlet. Oh, you're hamburger right. Yes, Hamlet, right? Yeah. 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 And Very it was kind famous. of a, a low-key TGI Fridays type place. So it wasn't just like a burger bar. Uh, but it was it, like he, a celebrity chef. Like it was sort of a famous Hollywood. Yeah, place. yeah. Chain place. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. he had found one off the beaten path somewhere in Santa Monica that was really quiet on a, on a Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. And they would serve underage people. So he figured that out. Like he figured that he figured out how that they would just serve if he had ordered. And so you'd go there and you'd have lunch and you'd go, try, have you ever had a martini? And you know, you're 19, 20 and you go, no, I don't know. It's important, I think, to mention at this point that he was a recovering alcoholic and he did not drink. At that point, he did drink. He oh, had, when he I got an, there, he had, Yeah, no, he was still oh. smoking and drinking at that point. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah. you got to see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So- and his whole style then was to get, and of course, on a martini, two martinis on an empty stomach, because uh, ultimately you wouldn't have lunch, you get hammered, right? When you're 90 pounds and 19 years old or whatever I was, 19, 20 years old, and you weigh, you know, 100 pounds soaking wet, and you have two martinis on an empty stomach, so you're hammered. Uh, and so it went on like that. Um, but I was, first of all, I wasn't homosexual. So there wasn't anything yeah. happening on that level at all. Second of all, he wasn't an attractive man by any standard, right? I think that's fair to say. <laughs> that is uh, absolutely fair to say. <laughs> yeah. And he, he knew that about himself as well. Um, and second of all, it was inappropriate. And, you know, I wasn't some, you know, I, I wasn't going to go for anything. But he, anyway, he would invite me to his, uh, come take a ride with me. It went on for years. I bought a new condo. I want to show you the condo. We get to the condo and he would show me around and be like, yeah, it's a great place. Can we get out of here now? What are we doing? I don't, why am I here? And he'd kind of do it like a lean in and kind of purse his lips and kind of just be like, like he's going for a kiss or something. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Open the door, you know, and there'd be all this stuff. And for years, he'd, he'd invite me over. He had like a 16 page poem that he had written and he was right, reading this whole poem out loud to me and all this stuff. And uh, I said, I, oh yeah. my gosh, I was just on and on and on. 
Then he promised me parts. Such a turn off. It was totally a turn off. I, he, and he's just reading it and he's going, my, my love is like a swan in the, and he thought it was, I said, can you print that off for me so I can read it on my own? Which I think put a red flag up for him because he's like, uh. And he would promise me parts, pull me in, go, I'm, I'm going to be doing a play next semester and I, you've got the perfect part. And then I'd go, <gasps> it all culminated in this. Yeah, I've got the perfect part for you, blah, blah, blah. And I was skating thinking, I've got this thing in the bag. I didn't even audition, I don't think. He's like, you're great for it. And he just wanted an excuse to talk about theater with me and talk about this play. And he was going to put me in it. It was like the lead role, da 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 And they used to, back then, they, they would post the cast list on the back wall of the main theater um, by the green room, sort of. And you'd, you'd go in when they post the cast list. That was kind of the deal um, after auditions. And just as a formality... <laughs> I went by to check out the cast list just to see. Um, As a late, yeah, because I, uh, I, you know, you sure you had it. I yeah, got this course. in the bag, and I go back and I see the cast list, and I'm not on the cast at that point. And he was, he had been, he was upset at me, and he gave it to, I think he gave it to the other Todd, Todd Bartell. Oh. Um, other Todd. There was another Todd. Yeah, there, yeah. there were a couple Todds. <laughs> Two Todds. <laughs> one good one and one dark one. Um, Bartell, that's another story. He had issues too. He had issues. Apparently still does. Um, oh. It's oh. getting, now it's it, without getting too dark. But so I confronted him. I went to his house. I, I had, I think I had been at the bar already, like the fireside or something. I had a couple drinks. Afterwards, I was on my way and I thought, oh, let me check that cast list. Um, or maybe somebody had said something like, you're not, I checked the cast list, you're not on it or something. Cause I went to check and I was furious then fuming like this mother effort, you know, the whole thing. Got my little Honda Civic, raced over to his house cause I knew where he was, buzzed and got in and I was about to beat the living hell out of him, right? So, Silence, really? Was that like your thing? Did you want to hit him? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was, he at that point, he'd been screwing with me. You know, this is an expensive oh, private fine, school, right, Mark? Sure. How much did you pay to go to this school? So much money. Right. If I hadn't a year? been hit by a car at the DMV, <laughs> I would not have been <laughs> able to pay off my student I, re loans. I remember. <laughs> oh, and that is true. My. Yeah. Fortune. Yeah, Fortune falls on the, yeah. No, but it was, it, those, these are 1990, early 90s dollars. And that was I, I, 20 grand a year, eight, 15 to 20, something a year. So it was not a cheap place to attend. And these were adults who were supposed to be in charge of, and this is my career and my life and my journey. And you're effing with it because I don't know, you're like a sick sexual predator essentially. <laughs> and you're toying with people. And I was not the one to be toyed with, played with. Um, and he was doing it with a few others as well, but, Mostly in those in that those years, he was he was way into me. So I do take some point of pride in that, by the way. <laughs> I don't think that's wrong. Um, so I showed I up as that way. I mean, I guess I should be flattered. <laughs> yeah, be be flattered <laughs> to some to some degree. To some degree, he could have sexually predated anyone. Anyone, and he chose <laughs> he me. chose you. <laughs> he could have chosen wow. to to assault anyone. You um, might still need therapy. I'm thinking. I might need a bit. Yeah. <laughs> PTSD. I know you. I know you've got issues. Okay. I don't want to take up all the time on this because I want your version. But I, I did approach him. I was about ready, and he answered the door. And he had this lock inside the house that had a key on the inside. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Which was specifically my installed. Plays into my story too. Okay. Does that play in? Because at this point now, and it, part of this story is also an apology to you, but. I was furious with him. I, he's in his little bathrobe and his terry cloth, and he's like, Todd, Todd. He would say fragile, it just made me want to oh, shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> well, made me want to shoot him. Yeah. Oh, Todd, Todd, no, no. And I was like, you, and I banging him against the wall, and I'm it's threatening him. I got my fist cocked back, and I'm like, you mother, how dare you? You so full of, you're such a pathetic. Uh, uh, uh. And I said, and I decided not to punt. He wasn't worth it. I said I something to that effect. I was like, you're not worth it. You know, I had also gone after Dr. Bob, who was the chair of the department at one point, because they were all yes. just messed up. Messed they were up all horrible. And Dr. Bob also was admitted. He admitted pedophilia. 
um, of his own children and stuff. And he was the chair of the department and he was also a pain in the ass. Like drunk around a campfire yes. with, with other students. You heard that? Before I, I was sitting there. there. I was I sitting that. there next to him at a, at a birthday party and he sat there and he started crying. I said, what is he talking? What is he saying? Diane Benedict and Tim Fitzgerald sitting there. And he yeah, said, other teachers were there. That's teacher. what pisses me off. Like, why was he still there when I got there? No, what I don't know. They were getting rid of him. They were getting rid of him, mm -hmm. but tenured, man, tenured. Oh, right. This is the worst thing that we let, I let happen with Ron was I allowed him to carry on, get tenured. I didn't really understand that he was doing this like completely uh, to others. So I left, I ran out, he chased, I, I, well, no, I turned and I went to open the door and I saw that it was locked. And that's when I, the red mist, and I, I was like, and I saw that he had this key in the lock that was missing. Like it was a lock from the inside with a key. Like I couldn't. And so I'm open. I said, give me that effing key, Ron. And he's like, oh, oh I don't know. I said, you got that key. <laughs> you know, give me the key. Don't. And he, he produced it pretty quickly out of his pocket. Ha, ha, ha. And then he starts to chase me down the stairs. I'm running to my car. And I'm like, get away from me. He's like, oh, chasing me like a, like a, like a housewife, you know, in his slippers and his robe. And he's chasing me down the stairs and I'm getting my car. Get away from me. I was just embarrassing at that point. It was probably about midnight, something like that. You know, I get in my car, I drive off. And after that, it was, there was a lot of back and forth. I always sort of tried to consider him a friend because in my head at that age and where I was at, I thought, okay, it's, it's one thing. He's got a crush on me. I don't blame him for that. How could you? He's only human. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and it's got nothing to do with me. I'm not attracted to him. I'm not homosexual. So there's nothing going to happen. It's fine. But the punishment part. Now, enter Mark later and a few other problems with, with issues with kids. Now, I think part of the reason we then we heard later that Ron and Mark were, well, essentially we heard that you guys were an item. What? In a sense. Well, this is because Bartel was the one that found you there, right? But I, in my head, and this is just me sort of understanding things myself, was because you were gay, it didn't resonate with me immediately that it could happen the same way it happened. Like, I, I felt it was more of a choice, and the way it was presented as well was that it was more of a choice, you know, like... Oh yeah, they're 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 together, sort of. Even though that's a completely inappropriate relationship. Even though I knew Ron and knew his shenanigans and knew his modus operandi, somehow in my head I thought, oh, and knew that it was wrong. You know, it's inappropriate. So that's I'm setting it up like that, and now I'm turning it over to you. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, oh God. I know. Um, yeah, where, yeah. <laughs> when did he first sort of like, so, you know, I met obvious? him when I yeah. came to visit the college, which okay. should right. have been made. It is major foreshadowing because the night before I was flying in with my mother to visit LMU to see it and do whatever that orientation, yeah, like, whatever that visit. visiting students thing was yeah. happening. And, um, the night before I was getting on the plane to go there. The the uh, Rodney King riots broke out. Oh God! Right. And my friend called me um, that I was in, had gone to high school with, and she was like, um, "Are you still going?" And I'm like, "Well, of course I'm still going. Why wouldn't I go?" And she's like, "Oh, you haven't turned on the news?" And I'm like, "Yeah, no." And she's like, "Yeah, LA's on fire." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, the very first thing I thought was, well, I can't tell my mom or she'll cancel the trip." So I didn't, and <laughs> no one turned on the news. So we got on the plane, and right before we start to like oh our God. descent, um, smoke plumes coming up from the. Well, the pilot gets on and is like, "So I'm sure you're all aware of what's happening in L.A. Martial so just law. To let you know, there is a curfew know. in effect. You can't be outside of your hotel or wherever you're staying after 6 p.m. Yeah. And yada yada. And my mom is like, "What is he talking about?" Yeah, and. To show you I was not lying and I was not a good act. I mean, that I was not a good actor. I turned to my mom and I'm like, oh, I have no oh. idea. And she's like, you knew. <laughs> <laughs> like, she could tell right away. Something. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, and, I just um, want to clarify. 1992, Rodney King beatings, then the trial, 
The cops that beat him is a big deal. They were let off. This is a long time ago for many people, including Jay. Uh, they, the cops were let off, the white uh, racist cops in Los Angeles. And then as soon as they were all let off and found not guilty of beating, which was on tape, that was the first time somebody had actually visit, videotaped the violence. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all let off and then riots struck and it went on for three days and there was military on the streets, martial law and a full like uh, uh, kind of a lockdown situation and rioting and all of South Central LA on fire and dangerous. And we were staying at like a hotel near the airport and we were on the sixth or 10th floor and you could literally see the see plumes just of smoke. flames and yeah. plumes of smoke like all across yeah. Los Angeles. Oh, we did that. We Mark, Mark, uh, and Tim and I, Mark McLaughlin and stuff. We all lived in a building right on the edge of Inglewood, and we, we have video. I have video of that looking out oh, and wow. seeing just. I, I mean, hundreds. Well, let's see, almost a hundred plumes of smoke. How did oh. you get video? Phones couldn't do that then, could they? <laughs> we had video cameras. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh yeah, Phones. that's right. There was a <laughs> no. We had the VHS. Yeah, it was like a VHS tape camera. Anyway, we're going right. way back now. I know. So sorry. Nobody. I everybody knows you. your age now, Mark. You cannot well, I, hide it. No, I was a prodigy. I did start at. Let me see. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was uh, yeah, yeah, nine. eight. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was. Somehow eight. the math. The math just don't figure. I'm, I was no math major in university, but so he was also a real pedophile, Ron Morasco. <laughs> no, oh no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, um. So anyway, so you know, we go to the theater department and have our sort of like, what it was tour. either Dr. Bob was going to talk to me or Ron. Yeah. Ron made sure that I was talking to him. In mm -hmm. the interview, he was just like, "I think you should come here." He was like very adamant, like, this mm -hmm. is going to be very good for you. Like convincing me, convincing my mother, mm -hmm. very good for me. Oh my God, that's so gross. Oh my God. Um, so he, and, and, and they made the jokes grooming, about the, the fact that begins. I still showed up the day after like riots broke right, out and right. everything. And um, were you the only one? No, I mean, there were other people there, but I don't know who, how many flew in. I might've been the only person okay. that actually still flew in. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that like happens or whatever. And then like it was, it was the same sort of like attention thing where I was like, girls couldn't get appointments with him even though he was their right. career counselor, That's you right. know, for yeah, the used to complain, department. They? Yeah. And yet he would just go into his office all the time. Sometimes we just shoot the shit. Like, sorry, I know I'm not supposed to swear on here. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't Netflix apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep um, it clean. Yeah, right, right. Sorry. It's hard with this story. And um, I know. So w whatever it was like, he, he also promoted himself as the younger teacher as the friend of the students. Yeah. Like he was like, Oh, and I'll hang out with students. And he was like, and with me, it was like, I don't drink anymore. But you know, I, I'll he'll still you know, go to the bar. And he, yeah, he'll... yeah, and have him over to my and would drop things like and I'd have him over to my apartment. And, and I'd let him drink there because I don't care. And 18's old enough. And, you know, it's shit like that. Yeah, yeah, that he'd yeah. work into grooming. Other it's all grooming. It's I don't even so know we had a term. But I, I have a, who of us knew what grooming was? Well, there wasn't then. even that term back then. Like, and honestly, nobody, your parents is, wouldn't have suspected it. I remember, exactly. and I'm, I'm going to drop this one. I remember my mother getting upset with me. He would call me from the bathtub. Do you remember oh, this? What? He kept his I phone. Mean, it was creepy. He probably he kept, did that to he, me. I he must have done it. He kept his a phone by the bathtub. Then he would get in the bath and call. And he'd call. You can hear him splashing around in there. Like right, a hard so line. Like hard line. Oh, I don't know what he's doing. No, because the phone call would go on for 45 minutes, two hours sometimes. And my mother would come. Well, like at Christmas break, he would call me for hours. And my mother would go, me too. what are you doing? Call me at get home. Off, call you at home. Yeah. And he's like, get, she, and get I would, off the I phone. And I go, I'm trying to get off like, the phone no, no. with this guy. You can't get off the no. phone with him. Yeah. And I would be like, oh, he's, a, he's no, he's a teacher that like talks Cares. to his students at home. Yeah. Like that's who he is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I would yeah. make excuses for him. Yeah. And um, so that would happen. And one time when he did that, and this is how it all sort of started. This is Christmas break, my freshman year. Right. And um, I... I'm home and I'm having a really hard time with my parents. Because yeah. by this point, like, I know I'm gay. I need 
to go out, like whatever. And they were, they like had grounded me for something and it's winter in Connecticut. Uh, There's yeah. snow ever. You cannot go anywhere without a car. Yeah. And I couldn't use their cars. I was grounded or whatever. And the the most, the I was so upset. I didn't feel like it was right. You know, whatever. Right. And, um, and Ron was the well, I'm telling him this on the phone yeah, yeah. and he's like, we'll come back early. And I'm like, Oh, I can't campus doesn't open. It only opens three days before Christmas break. Oh, over guess camp. who has a spare camp. early as you can go back. And he goes, Oh, well, come and stay with me. And a little piece of me, like super <laughs> tiny. Cause I was so, I was pretty sheltered in this little small Windsor town. Yeah. Place. Yeah. And, um, and maybe it was like the night, I just really didn't want to believe there was anything malicious or, creepy about it a a tiny little voice was like are you sure like i don't know and it's so hard to tell and i was like but i needed to get out of my house like i couldn't stay i could not stay the whole christmas vacation oh he 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 picked the right it was awful so he took he saw the opportunity and like took advantage and yeah and i was like well okay and i guess it's only for like a day or two um and so this is also crazy how it tied in with all of these horrible incidents um so i decide to go i somehow convinced my parents they're like where are you staying and i'm like with my friends so i weirdly i knew to not tell them i was staying with a professor Mm. because it wouldn't sound right even though i didn't think anything weird was gonna happen i trusted him stupidly um, naively. And, um, so I get to his, he doesn't pick me up at the airport, which I, I thought was weird. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, it's not like I traveled a lot by myself at yeah. that point. Yeah. But, um, even though I was like 18, I was a pretty stupid young 18, I think. And, um, yeah, we all were. so I get to his place. He lets me in the, I hear the locks on the other side and, um, he's working on his dissertation. Yeah. which is this Shakespearean no, whatever. Never like ending. It's all about Shakespeare. He is like deep into it. I walk in and like, I can see the kitchen table is covered with books and papers. And he's like, yeah, this is where I do all my work. And he's like, so um, while you're here, I'll sleep on the couch. You can have my bed because I work like late hours or whatever. And I was mm. like, okay, whatever. And he's like, how are you? Are you tired? Do you need a nap? What do you, and I'm like, no, it's like middle of the afternoon. It's a five hour flight. Like, no, I haven't like been up that yeah. long. Like I'm not tired or whatever. And I was like, I just need to decompress from all the travel. So I was like, if you're working, does it bother you if I just watch some TV or something? And I remember all of it so specifically because I turned on the TV and it was the Golden Girls, <laughs> like being rerun on Lifetime or something at like four o'clock in the afternoon. And so I'm like, that's perfect. I it wasn't picky about what I was watching. It's a great show. So <laughs> I'm like I still watching get that and like, I don't know, halfway through the episode or the second episode or whatever, he walks away from his work, turns off the TV and he's like, I need a nap. Um, let's take a nap. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Why would you need a nap? You live here. And it's like the middle of the, I didn't understand. And I was like, you but I started nap, nap was code for something. Like panic freeze mode. Jesus. And, um, was like okay and as i'm walking to the bedroom i remember chanting in my head to myself no maybe it really is just a nap it's just a nap like maybe there's nothing wrong with that it's not like i was like convincing myself Mm. that it was okay and nothing bad was going yeah because what's the alternative and um and when i laid down on the bed I remember shutting my eyes like this, like you can't sleep like this, <laughs> but I was no. squishing my eyes shut really tight. And I was still chanting that same thing oh over my in my head that it was Jesus just a nap Lord. and there's nothing weird about it. And um, when he started touching me and taking off my clothes, I couldn't talk. I, I would like kind of froze and was like, what, what's happening? And he uh yeah definitely tried insertion and everything awful but that was when i all snapped and i like came together and part i'm sure was like the pain but i 
had, he had lifted my legs up. And so I took my feet and I kicked his chest wow. and he went flying off the back of the bed, hitting a bookshelf oh, God. at the other, at the, I don't know if you remember the layout of his he, apartment, he but sorted, I guess, yeah. like a bed and then a bookshelf against the wall. And then like the door in was like right to the, yeah. to the side of the bookshelf. And he hit the bookshelf and I ran into the bathroom, which was just to the left of his bed and shut the door and locked it behind me. And he starts like yelling on the other side, are you okay? Like da da da. And he's like, and I'm like, I need to take a shower and I will come talk to you when I am done. <laughs> and um, in, your, in your fiercest. And I said something like that can never happen again or something like, right. I don't know if I said, I don't know if I said it right there, but I'll get to that. And then I took like a crazy long Silkwood shower. You guys, <laughs> if you don't know the reference, Meryl Streep and Cher made a movie where they yeah. were getting like, like, it contaminated, contaminated by like nuclear from the, waste the or nuclear something. nuclear power plant. And yeah. so they would take these showers trying to wash it off and you yeah. cannot. And similarly in yeah. this situation. Yeah. I get and it. so the, I the, took a really, really long time. I remember one point keen. him knocking on the door again. I was like, I'm fine. And, um, Oh God, he must've known at I that get, point. I get fully He'd dressed again and I walk out and he's sitting and you're not going to fucking believe this Todd. Um, but he's sitting on his couch and, um, looking very sad, very sad. Mm -hmm. Harvey very Weinstein hurt. style. Yeah. Oh yeah. All the sexual and, predators um, do. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I don't say like to him me. immediately as I sit down <laughs> and I was like that. And I think I hit his leg and I was like, that was wrong. And that can never happen again. And you understand that. Right. And I felt so mature. Yeah. Like that I was right. handling this so well, this older man who had a crush on me and didn't know how to deal with it. Like, yeah. I'm all like, this might be normal gay life. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's how it goes down. I don't know. And, um, and I'm like, and he goes, oh, oh okay. And he starts quivering his chin. Oh, God, yeah. And gets a single tear down his eye. And I'm like, he was a good actor. Like, you taught us that in class, you asshole. Yeah. Sorry. And I, I, in my head, I was like, oh, my yeah, God, he's yeah. fucking acting right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he taught us, like, how, how he's like, oh, you can chin, focus on this start. little yeah. itch behind your eye, and you can do, like, a single tear, yeah. and you can do double tears. You, you can do, there's technical things you can do if you're not feeling the emotion. And he's like, and if you start, he's like, if you noticed in people, sometimes you start your... Yeah chin quivering before like the tears start and whatever I, it was like fucking in order yeah. of how he taught it in class like how yeah. he fucking did it in front of me and I'm, I'm like do you not me. remember that you taught me this wow and so i but i said none of that this is all interior monologue for you actors and um so jay is any of this resonating with you i'm just uh, i'm just i'm just in listening. shock yeah. Shock. yeah yeah Okay, I just He's wanted to check in. Not been by a professor. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. So after uh, that, now what was the point when because Bartel, yeah, I mean, he, he, here comes Todd Bartel again, uh, into the into the fray. At what yeah. point then? So, um, he came to the house and you were there. Yes. Okay. So that's this is the next this is the next crazy universe type thing that happened was so he's like okay, the campus didn't open for another day. Like, this is the day I got there. Yeah, yeah. And so the campus is still not open. And now I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? And he goes, he's like, well, after still on the couch, he's like, you know, you're 18. So so nothing that happened was really wrong. But I, it is a Catholic university, so we can't tell anybody. When he, you were saying about him chasing you down the hallway, I'm like, was it for that? Was he like go into how you can't tell part, anybody and like yeah, partly he lose his job and, oh, and but nothing we did was wrong because you're old enough like weird like that that you're just kind of like oh okay yeah. whatever and again i, I want to kind of really good at putting this guy down i thought it was like as if somebody normal had just hit on him. i want to go back but again, a little he's so old i think he told us he was 31 but he was clearly 41 and speaking of lying about our ages really did and, oh, um, that, is that right yeah maybe 
Yeah, I was sure. More like, closer like, to 40 know, than he was to 30. He, for sure. I mean, if he was 31, I'm like, you look terrible. Yeah. Like, you, okay, now I get your alcoholic past. Yeah. Like, you are definitely, your body is failing you. You are hideous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I just want to so, put a pin in it real quick because I want, for the audience's sake, this is 1990s we're talking about here. And this is, yeah, so yeah. if we go and talk about, you know. Early 90s. Early 90s. Me Too movement. If you look at any of that kind of stuff that is recent, you can think about how it was not something that you could report. Nobody would understand all that stuff that you heard about from Harvey Weinstein and uh, the other one. Um, the end of the one. Yeah, I got and and, and, and it was Spacey. in the pandemic and and the Me Too movement Epstein. and then into the pandemic. Yeah, I was triggered because because of all that stuff. Yeah. Realized it was textbook predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, separating yeah. me from anyone I knew. Yeah, getting me into a place where I couldn't get out. Right, and then doing all, like it was isolating you from yeah, people Jeff that predator. care. Yeah, but I didn't know he was doing the same thing to me as well. But just and he did so it, I, I met a kid. He did it to after me. Oh, like, and I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this whole. Uh, terrible tale with the update which i yeah don't know if i which i'm i'm curious but so that you guys so that night so he's like okay well you'll sleep in the bedroom there's a lock on the door if you don't feel and I, there was and it didn't look like it was like a key lock but at least whatever <laughs> and he slept out on the couch or whatever that night i wake up to the entire building shaking Oh, and God. it and the headboard like slamming against the thing and then oh, the bookshelf God. that was across from the bed tipped over and landed on the foot of the bed wow. and books were all over the bed and everything and um it what was the northridge earthquake that was northridge Jeez. yeah so it's now 1993 yeah i think january yeah. so yeah. um wow that was a massive and that was I an hear, earthquake and that I can was hear, historic and by the time earthquake. i realized what'd you say it was a historic earthquake. It was like seven seven on the Richter or something like that. Seven point yes, one on the Richter. Exactly. And it was Big Martin day. Luther King Day. It was very early in the morning. So yeah. luckily there were less people 4 on the road. Four AM, three all of the freeway bridges collapsed. Yeah, collapsed. It was a big one. And um, um, Yeah, yeah. Yo, that was yeah. the big one. That was the big it was one. The, it was really it's big. Historic. It was the biggest That's one in LA in a very, very long time. Yeah, hundreds of years. And um yeah. and so and I hear Ron on the other side of the door, which is still locked and closed, screaming, Mark, are you okay? Mark, are you okay? And I'm like, by the time I realized, okay, oh, it's an earthquake. This is my first earthquake. And it was a big one. And um, wow. I hear me, I finally, by the time I realize what's happening, it has ended and it is over. And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And um, go we back go to out and it was after that when people start coming to the door and check on you and students that were used to hanging out at Ron's would come over and Todd Bartell, is it okay? We said his name. Sure. Yeah. He's, he's, I think you already had, and uh, we can always believe it if he's not comfortable with that. Um, I don't care. He came over and knocked on the door and I remember noticing how Ron opened it just a crack. Yeah. And so that he couldn't see me. Yeah. And that in my head was such a red flag yeah. that I jumped over so that I could be seen right. and was like, oh, hi, Todd. And he instantly was like, he had already oh. told Todd it wasn't a good time and he couldn't let him in, but that he was fine. And when I jumped in, Todd went back and he goes, oh, Mark's doing the same thing you're doing, just checking in on me. But now we're like deep in a conversation. Something's he made up. Yeah, and I was right. like, okay. But at least Todd knows I'm here now yeah and uh which the other time. I, I still not in me. the moment like i did not think it just i just did it you know what it was it was after the fact where i was like wow i'm really glad i did that that's so weird that is my weird. instincts were strong enough to have me do yeah, that yeah but now i'm stuck there for longer and honestly the rest right. of it is kind of a blur like yeah. i know nothing ever happened again and I might have even gone, I don't know if you remember, um, Jen Langford and, and Greg Reiner. I might have like gone mm. to their place. They were roommates. But I don't, I think I maybe didn't stay. 
but or yeah i don't remember what it was or they oh because they couldn't open the campus because they hadn't inspected for damages right yet. right wow. like, it was really awful what and weird position. it's all like a blur um and bartell of course that, came back and just reported that Cirillo. Which and, I'm glad, but it's probably no, no. looked worse for me. It didn't it look worse like, for you. It didn't oh, I got you. trapped there. It was no, like, it wasn't oh, like, we got to go rescue yeah. Mark. He's under, and by the time I heard it, it was already, you know, way after the situation, but he- it, Yeah, it and, and so like, and your conversation with me about being careful with him, which I remember you coming up to me on campus and saying something, and I really appreciated it, but it had already happened, Yeah, I think, because um, he worked fast. And so, yeah, it was over Christmas break or whatever, I guess. It was, um, I went to see a play that a friend was in in LA and I'm looking at what the name of the director and I'm like, well, that name looks so familiar. What is it? And she taught at LMU, but I'd never had her. This is after I'd graduated mm. and everything. And um, she had some LMU students in the play and somehow I asked who was like still teaching at the school and Ron was still teaching at the time. And I was like, Ugh. and she saw my reaction and she was like, it didn't happen to you, did it? And I was like, oh. yeah. and um, oh, she was God. like, no, no, no. She's like, it's awful. He's still there. He's now the head of the department. Yeah. And he's got um, tenure. Once they got rid of Bob. So now no accountability really. Yeah. And um, she told me how one I should talk to one of the kids in the play because it happened to him too. And she's like, and I'm worried about um, this other uh, kid that he started hanging out with. But then she, um, the next time I saw her, uh, which was another play that my, my friend is in her theater group and they do really cool stuff in LA. And um, she told me that Ron had been, had announced that he was leaving in the middle of a semester right. to be closer to family in the East Coast and to write. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? And she, I was like, in the middle of a semester. So his mm -hmm. contract and all that, what, mm -hmm. what happens with that? And she goes, well, my theory is that he was asked to leave mm -hmm. and he had been hanging out with a basketball student Mm -hmm. um, that was a non-major. So I think one of her students mm -hmm. and how she was like, and she's like, this is just my theory. This is not, this is why I'm not saying her no, name. No, I heard the same thing. Like that. So I'll, I'll, even, I'll go really little, close to this basketball student. I'll, I'll go further. Time really. Like he did. So people could see this. Diane Benedict no. could see this. These yeah, teachers yeah, 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 that yeah. I admired and liked in the department we're allowing this and that pisses me off because I right. trusted and loved them. And um, even well, KB Free knew, like they all knew. Yeah, the whole staff yeah. It was knew. the times, it was the times. And, and she was like, we all knew. And so we've been watching, we've been worried about this kid, but he was a basketball star, LMU's one sport. The water polo team, but nobody watches water polo. I liked watching them, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> And they liked to run around campus. No, so what, what I heard was that, ba game. as I you really said, like basketball that. is the... <laughs> I'm a creeper now, too. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, uh, she tells me about how, like, whatever, and she was like, and then all of a sudden, they're no longer hanging out together, um, and Ron is out. And it was fast, and it was immediate. And she's like, I think he did it to him. He went to his coach. And yeah. the coach went to the head of the effing university and yeah. was like, this is what's happened and you need to do something. And yeah. I'm sure they had already heard. I'm sure they knew. I want my fucking education money back. I, we should sue Todd, like mass. Like I'm so, it's so like, it has now messed me up so much. Once I realized it, it real. I found out through therapy, like it was PTSD. Like my audition started being weird again. And then my therapist had traced it back to like, he was like, what are He had been like, well, when you tell me you've had a bad audition, he goes, this is the scenario. Sometimes it was a friend got you the audition or an older actor that you had worked with or something. And he was like, when an, somebody is, and if it was through an LMU connection, my auditions sucked. Mm, right. And I couldn't figure it out. 
I knew all the things about relaxing yourself, like how to get, do things to get yourself into character right before, all of our tricks that we'd use as actors and nothing was working. And I, it was like a deer in headlights sometimes. Yeah. And my, they were like, well, that's a PTSD reaction. It's like this weird things that like uh. hadn't happened for so long or only happened on those specific auditions. <laughs> I couldn't understand my inconsistency as an actor. And now it seems like it's all traced back to that. And even my emotional issues during college, like I, things were going, I was losing my mind in college mm. and I thought I was losing my mind and I never connected it to that. But it was like literally the split from when I would start crying uncontrollably at weird times in the day, at night, not being able to sleep, like really weird things that somehow I never connected to that. Like I needed a third person yeah. to go through these things and connect the dots and, 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 and in a way that made confronted. sense. And I was like, no, like timeline wise, it's so obvious, you know, yeah. it was, yeah, so really messed up. I'll just say quickly that I, I I heard the same thing. LMU, I want to I want to explain it. Loyola Marymount is a big basketball school. That's all they cared about is their basketball program. There was no football team. They There's did no not football. Have. There's nothing. No other sport. That that kid was interested in in theater and acting. Yes. and he was the star of the basketball team. Yeah. So the coach said, "All right, you know, there's a theater department. I'll get in touch with them." And he just wanted to take some theater classes and on the sly. Yeah. Sent him over there, Ron. Groomed yeah, him, awesome. went after him, but this kid was not having it and immediately recognized it. Went back, yeah, to his coach and went, this guy's a creep. He's trying to get, like, do all this stuff. At which point, that was it. Ron had messed with the wrong kid and the wrong people in, the, in, in LMU. And yet, the university still covered it all up. Of course. And gave him a farewell lecture allowed him to then speak to the community and all I got invited on Facebook oh my to God. go to this his farewell lecture, which I thought about going to just <sighs> to call ruin him it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm just not, I just don't. I'm not So I this can't. is what's interesting for us is because all the things that happened to the in with the Weinsteins and the Me Too I mean, that was quite extreme and, and drastic. And Kevin Spacey, that's another predator who I've tracked for many years. And I've heard, I knew stories. Oh, in a the friend 90s. of mine got hit on by him. Yeah, yeah. I'm a friend of mine as My well. My same friend that's in the, that theater company. With really? The old LMU teacher. Oh, yeah. Well, he should feel yeah. very, yeah. very. Um, and Kevin was here. This Spacey was in here doing the old Vic. And I knew people that knew him here and stuff. And I always told people, this guy's a sexual predator and you forget, you know. And nobody wanted to hear all that noise, even though the stories were rampant and everybody knew. But again, it was the era. It was the times. People didn't look the other way. It wasn't talked about. And it certainly, there was no help or support for. I, uh, I met Kevin Spacey at LMU, by the way. Did you? Um, after I graduated, I went back to see a play. I want to say it was Gloria Calderon Kellett was maybe mm -hmm. doing a show there because she did okay. a lot with LMU after she graduated. Yeah as somebody that was not sexually assaulted. And um, right. so I went back to see the play and Kevin Spacey was there. And I brought my friend, um, do you guys know who Bruce Valanche is? He's like a big writer, yeah. Hollywood, yeah. yeah and um, sure. Hollywood Squares um, with Whoopi Goldberg. And um, so he's a good friend, another older friend that people have assumed because we were friends, we were in a relationship. Mm. And um, so he knew Kevin and so, he introduces us and we're like talking. And then I go to the bathroom right next to the little theater, you yeah, know, right yeah. there, cause we're in the main theater. And so it's in the, right off the lobby. And there's like what, three or four urinals in there. Yeah. And I go in and seconds later, Kevin He's Spacey right behind is you. next to me, even though no one else is in there, yeah, there's, he right gone next to, to my yeah. urinal. And I'm like, I just keep saying in my head, I'm like, just don't. Look, it's just a nap. It's look, just a nap. Keep your eyes forward. And there is action happening down there. Like there is like flustering and he's like wagging something around. And I do not look. I was oh, very proud of myself. God. Because that's a little curious. Sure. Um, 
And uh, I and then I just left, and I just I kept my like horse blinders on, and I walked out. And no, I he had a terrible Bruce, reputation. And Bruce was like, "Yeah, he does that. Yeah. yeah, that's a thing of his. Like he knew. Yeah, everybody fact, knew." Bruce got calls from Scott Wolf, who used to be on Party of Five. He was doing like a play with Kevin Spacey in New York. Yeah, and Kevin would not stop hitting on him. Right. Scott Wolf is a married man right. with children who lives next door to Bruce. And he was like, I don't know what else to do. I've told him no a million times. I'm like that dude, like just step back a little. Yeah. And he didn't know what else to do. So he calls his neighbor in LA to be like, I'm so sorry to do this. This is what's happening. Can you just say something to him to get him to step back? Like, and Scott Wolf was like an adult man by that point. Like, yeah. And he still had to ask somebody else to step in because wow. Kevin Spacey would just not listen to him. Like he was aggressive, very aggressive. There's a lot of Hollywood gossip coming out of this. There is this big is time Hollywood true gossip. and verified by the multiple reason. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm I, I'm doing it as a as a as a public service here. I think we both are right. Um, yeah, Be not careful. just. I feel yeah. so bad for not doing anything before. I know, but I was. So, so messed I. up in my own head until very, I mean. I pandemic. didn't get it. And I'll tell you what else was interesting too, because it, it was, it wasn't happening to women or girls. And so that's another kind of thing that it has changed certainly. But even, even today, the Me Too and these kind of things, it's, it's, it's centered around women and, and, and girls. And, and that's fair because that's a majority, but heterosexual men and homosexual men who have been through sexual, you know, predator experiences with sexual predators and have been assaulted or attempted or harassed. Um, you know, there's a whole stigma obviously around us stepping forward as men and saying this is happening to us and even recognizing it as being the same exact situation that happens to women happened to us and society won't recognize it as the same we aren't trained to understand and recognize the same. Again, all this is changing, but particularly back in those days. So there was something that happened to you that even I, I, I feel somewhat responsible for because at the time I didn't have the equipment to say, no, 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 this is you know absolutely yeah. wrong. And it doesn't matter if Mark is a, 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 a gay or a boy, <laughs> and it doesn't matter if I'm straight and a boy, male this is an inappropriate relationship and beyond that it's predatory and it's it's going to affect and it has affected it affected me as well mark not to the same extent but you know i tried to get into ucla he was on the board there and he was in the casting room at the time and i had no chance uh bartell wow. got in yeah uh, I I, as a as a reserve yeah um and so uh, you know and i i i had him write because i still was in this phase i didn't understand i had him write a, a recommendation for me for the university you know like I, I i would come back to him at times i i considered him a friend and then as you pointed out linda cardellini was getting him parts in, yeah that's in, right i did say that to you like yeah he, he got a part on like one of the best television shows that has ever existed as a teacher on on um, Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, like, and, and, and he, he was in uh, Forty. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, no, the Virgin, Forty Year Old Virgin. I saw him mm -hmm. pop up. Which and she had worked with Joss Whedon, and she he ended up getting a part. Oh, she on, was. Like, Buffy but there was or Angel or one of those shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there was nobody who understood. Oh, and if you had told anybody at the time, they would have said, "Well, yeah, but you know, Ron's great." Yeah, because there's no. a, and, and, and Kevin Spacey like you a, told me that like you know how you just don't know what other people are thinking about you that like people I mean that people yeah essentially I was a, thought, in a, in that's, a that's with the him way at all. it was presented oh ta, uh, uh, Mark and 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 Ron are an item the other thing was he would plant stuff with other students for students he yeah. would allow oh, him yeah. in his office like it was so manipulative yeah, and was, like absolutely. puppet mastery yeah the way he would like. Because then, I, I mean, I stayed friends with a lot of people from LMU and yeah. they would tell me about how they would go into his office and he would trash talk me. Yeah. He would tell people I was crazy. Yeah. So that it, if it came out, yeah. 
Yeah. Nobody would believe me. Yeah. And I told one Demonize person, you. and it was the person I was closest to at the time, and it was Effie Brown, huge producer now, who I love. Yeah. And she was like, but so that was another weird thing that my freshman year, say? I bonded with all the older students. Like yeah. the seniors were. Yeah, we did. I hung out with them as much as anybody else. I yeah, connected. You were, with them. you were adorable. I was we obsessed with Effie. I mean, I love her. She's a phenomenal human. Um, we're still and very I close. Right, right, right away. And I was friends. like, I was kind of starstruck by her. I just thought she was. Yeah, hard not to be. Girl. Hard not to be. And so I told her, and and later she was like, "Oh yeah, everyone else already knew. I can't keep my mouth shut about anything." And so she told Nicole, um, her her best friend, who then told like all these other people. And um, I remember I got back to Tim, who was a a, a senior, and he was really like affected by that idea that Ron was not a perfect yeah. person. Yeah. And um, I remember at a party him asking me about it and I tried to like brush it off. Like it was nothing. He goes, no, 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 I'm, I'm actually serious. Like I, I want to know what mm -hmm. happened. And I told him and then it was like, it just became a weird thing where everybody kind of knew or had heard pieces of it. And th there was a divide between people who just yeah, believed, did not believe cared, it at all and those that or didn't care or whatever. Care. Yeah, yeah. And and definitely like put it on me and and I, I and like would be awkward around me mm -hmm. afterwards. Oh, it was the same with and me then to some people degree. That pretended like he yeah, trash talked me to so, uh, many yeah. many people. He tried to get people on side and stuff. And my my defense in a in a sense was to stay really close to him. You know, keep your enemies close and stuff. And and yeah, I just didn't know. I stuff. was so confused. I really felt like he had control over my education and my future mm -hmm. as a, like an actor. Well, he did. Um, that I think similarly a little bit, like I knew to be cautious with him, but I also mm -hmm. felt like I don't, who, out, he was the most talented director at the school. And yep. And, and he was casting the all the plays and, and he was the teacher. The most from, I learned a lot from Diane Benedict and historically I learned a lot about theater history from Katie Free. I really liked them a lot. I, I thought they were great. And, and Diane McLaughlin worked with me a lot. And I, I, I feel like I owe most of my good acting to her. Um, mm -hmm. But I still, it, it hurts me inside when I realize I'm using something Ron taught me. And and I need to go back to it's it difficult. sometimes to like it's difficult. Remind How do you detach I knew, from as the, an actor the for acting stuff? It's the same but thing the with anybody else. So how do you detach? How do you detach from the brilliant exactly? And the and the and the pressure. How do you separate the, the art from the artist? Right, right. Which is like a constant thing, especially during the Me Too movement. Yeah, and in the realizations about Woody. So Allen how do you feel now, world. like? I want to let's. I want to start pulling us out of the darkness a yes, bit. Yes, yes. Um, even Into though it's the light of acting. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a that, and that's a. And that's maybe a, we can include Jay Moore, who didn't have. Such poor Jay, he's just like. I warned him in advance. I did warn you, didn't I, Jay? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Jay. He, he did. No, no. Is there anything no, you want to talk, ask, or well, talk about, Jay? You look adorable there in your little circle. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm so glad I can provide the adorable little circle comforts in this awful, of awful conversation <laughs> uh no i don't i really don't i don't have i really don't have anything to say these sound really uncomfortable <laughs> but i'll uh, say this situations, situations uncomfortable so situations uncomfortable. yeah that reminds me of like the whole thing with um black lives matter and like them using the excuse of white children feeling uncomfortable during right. like class making, so don't teach people. them history so you're making people who were true. who were not sexually you assaulted not you're making you're making people yeah. that weren't sexually assaulted uncomfortable right sorry and maybe sorry. that was part of the feeling of the times it was like well nobody else has been through that why are you making us have yeah. to think about it? we I'm, all I'm love definitely one of those people that feels like well all the things nobody wants to talk about are all the things we must be talking about all the time yeah yeah until something is done yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so well, awareness is everywhere awareness that's oh, that's that's the, that's the key that's the key and that's why we we brought it up and it i think it was important and even important for our friends who are going to hear this and i think many of them will uh hear this podcast and hear this episode we hope our finally, friends are supportive and all, uh, after all these years to really understand like what 
what that was all about and what ha has happened. And yeah. they, they were part of that, you know, we mm -hmm. all were, and we were all affected. Um, McLaughlin, Mark McLaughlin just posted some pictures of Ron on our Facebook, our internal Facebook group. And I was like, I haven't written. I, I, I... And Mark McLaughlin's replacement is the one who invited me, who went to school with us, uh, was the one who invited me to the lecture. Cause he was, oh, was like, he? oh, I don't know why you didn't get this invite. I'm like, I might know why. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So how is that sort of that that dictated your that your career? You got out of university, you did graduate. Mm -hmm. You went to Hollywood, you got your agent. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was slow for me. I don't know how it was for you, but when I graduated from college, I was rocket ship. For me it was rocket ship to the top. Yeah, yeah, just how you expected it. <laughs> yeah. I I felt like I had been prepared for how to create a character and to be a good actor after you get the audition. I right. felt like nothing yes, that of at LMU taught yeah. prepared me for the business side of acting. Right. And I understand now that they do do that or they have like parts that are really just about like what you have so. to do as an actor that technically has nothing to do with acting and yeah. it's all about business and connections and whatever. And you want to believe that if you are just truly good and great, you don't need to have a good agent and you don't need to have these right. things and you don't have to worry about that because you're going to make it because you're good. And the truth is that is not true yeah. Yeah, that's like, not at true. all. Yeah. And you have to have these like connections and what, I mean, it happens different for everybody. Well, that's what offstage acting is about. Really, is, is, is train is helping to fill that gap that the acting schools don't teach. They teach acting; they don't teach you. Yeah. The business. Yeah, and I felt like they didn't even really teach auditioning. Like they taught. No, acting, it was. It was. Is, it was I've told this to Jay. If you monster. want to know about Greek theater and Stanislavski yeah. and old Russian plays, then you know. Which I loved. You great. know, doing Chekhov <laughs> with Diane Benedict. A classical like, education. Was yeah. Was a huge shift in it's, my acting yes like i felt i was oh i've reached good i've gotten to but like i said i told this to jay as well like when they when the when the job fair came to school and the booths were out and it was Citibank and uh big big corporations johnson's and johnson's and they were they were hiring there was no booth paramount pictures booth going hey right. you're an actor kid sign Come up here, here. we're, we're, we're recruiting <laughs> yeah yeah there was they no. really leave the arts out of career Bears. like yeah there was not no, i just was like oh my god okay. yeah what yeah that was jay's one chime in and we didn't even hear it no That's we fine. just talked right over it <laughs> jay <laughs> we get your elbow in there i have no listen this is my this is my listening time okay this is my this is my being a supportive um sidekick cabin boy time you know like i'll be the one i'm dusting the walls dusting, right now i'm pouring the polishing wine, my brass yeah polishing the brass yeah, yeah i'm like making sure that the like the handle isn't squeaky you know i'm making sure that the room is nice and comfy the ambient <laughs> lights you know the raging, yeah the raging storm outside i'll put a curtain in front of it um so that the waves crashing on the boat don't in you know interrupt the okay i think we get the let's not you know, bury the analogy. We get it. Great. So <laughs> now you're talking too much, Jay. We're exhausting the analogy. Thank you. I'm the guy who's meant to be silent. And he, he tells five minutes of talking about how, why, how, why, why he's being silent. Um, I'm into boats right now, I guess. Let's, let's flash. Let's. Is that, a, is that a Kevin Smith reference? Silent Jay? Was that one of them? Oh yeah, Silent Bob and Silent Jay. There's a Jay and Silent Bob. That's Jay and Silent Bob. That's right. Yeah. In this case, it's Sorry, Todd. Kevin, it's Todd and Silent Jay. I am a fan. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's let's He's let's move into player. your career, because you have found yourself oh, yeah. a little niche, haven't you? Yeah. I. What is your niche? A, what do you call it? I am a I am a bad gay movie star. Bad I mean, gay yeah, movie star. Bad. I love. But it. I'm in a lot of bad gay movies. But there was like one or two lead. good ones. Was there? Yeah, you're like the lead. Yeah. You, you, so you. Um, and and like even somebody's got to do it. I call them bad gay movies, and I really don't like mean offense. No, to it's the the, the low budget. No, it's the yeah. low budget stuff on Netflix that exactly. I never see because my algorithm never takes me there. But as soon as I punch right. in something like, as soon as I go into one that's like, 
well, as good as it gets. Well, nowadays you watch Maestro or right, you know, Maestro, Rustin, let's say. Right, and then all of a sudden my ag- algorithm starts to shift, and I'm seeing and a lot of Mark Cervillo. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, where am, where am I? I didn't even know all these movies existed. It's a whole genre. But you, you've you've cornered that market. Why do you think that is? I've cornered a market on a on a on on jobs that do not pay. Yeah, obviously so there's no pay. Great. Oh God. There's no money yeah. in it. Is like, there a fan base? Do you get movie? a fan the base? First movie I did that in that genre where I was a lead that was a feature was called The Seminarian, mm-hmm. which led to a lot of jokes from my friends. The Seminarian, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, you knew it. <clears throat> and um, and uh, there we go with I the boats got again. For awards at film festivals for that, the 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 film won awards. You got like, it. It's, okay. Did you win an award? I Did found you? it to be one of the most boring movies I'd ever sat through. Like I was like, oh my god, could we get some more shots of my phone, please? Because there's not enough <laughs> of that. My biggest co-star in the movie, more than the woman that plays my mother, or any of my friends at the seminary, was my phone. It was not. That was, it the, was star a very the, the star slow, of the film. meditative film, I believe, is how they. Did you get an award? Is there a gay Academy it. Awards? What's the gay equivalent of the Academy Awards? The Gabies? Oh no! It's uh, oh yeah! I I was nominated in the Gabies before. Is I that a real I thing? Won. That's yeah yeah. Thing. It is something called the Gabies. Todd, you just made that up. Just made that, that up, and it actually makes. I was nominated after opposite Alan Cumming, and I won, which makes me very proud. I had met, we, we had become somewhat friendly a, baby for winner. a little while and I texted him when I found out and I was like, can you please publicly announce <laughs> that you are dropping out of the race because you know you don't need it or deserve it since you get nominated for real awards. Right. And this is like an online award. And I was like, and then you don't have to do this, but if you did sort of push them towards right. who really deserves it, me, I'd appreciate it. And his yeah. response was, oh, bitch, now I'm going to campaign for yeah. the war. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you screwed up there. Like, yes, that is the no response. Way. How dare you? How dare you? That's such a oh, yeah. low thing to do. Like, <laughs> Which is hilarious. hilarious. Beg for your, like. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, I, I was trying to be funny. I know, but, but um, it backfired. And, and also like, somewhat serious. No, it, but yeah. it, I mean, it was. Did fun. you get the he award? Then, of course, immediately forgot. Did nothing to campaign, and I right. did win. But yeah, whatever. Congratulations! I think, I but so, so I basically only won like online awards and film festival awards. Yeah. Have you ever played straight? Yeah, a lot. I mean, okay, but not in anything like no noteworthy. Like most of my work's not noteworthy, <laughs> so that's a whole other thing. Yeah. So um, I'm very real about where I am in my career. Sure, sure. And that is that no, I but don't you've done some good anymore. stuff. You've, you've done some good stuff, and you've. So I mean, but literally, I haven't like since the pandemic. I have yeah. not worked, and there were a couple because the Me Too movement was before the pandemic, and my auditions were definitely affected by that. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. right before the pandemic, I was getting some of the best auditions in my life. Like mm-hmm. I went in for Top Gun 2, you know, oh, Maverick, nice. yeah. and um, auditioning for twin pilots, which are not in the finished movie. So I think it was like an actor test with fake pages maybe, or adjusted pages. Cause some of the scenes were in the movie, but um, it was cool. And I was like, well, I knew it instantly what I was gonna do. One of the pilots really wants to be in the program and one doesn't mm. really care. He's like a, a mess and one is gay and one is straight. Like I had it all in my head. I was like, not gonna tell any of it. Like it was just this whole thing. And I was good. I, I We had three scenes to do and I was like, good. And, and you know how you can feel it when the casting director's with you and they're yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And they're moving in and they're like, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden something in like the the third scene, the second time I did it with the with the character who cared, um, uh, I I weirdly got an instinct in the the middle of it where he like punches the top of the po- cockpit, like you know that glass yeah. that's there, yeah. just like as a push it. but it did not work, and I had not done There's it. There's no I glass to punch or anything, and you, the casting director went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I love that reaction. <laughs> like my the literally like oh. oh and then went back into this. Oh, we were we were I thought, I thought we had so something bad. We had something, but it was no. so bad. Oh, um God. yeah, and I and I went in for the morning show. I went in for like I, and it was like this recurring role. I was like, but so oh, tiny. My, my audition was a one word, one line part um in the episode that they were like reading have you been doing anything else to make ends meet and they wouldn't they wouldn't give me the before the after scenario like i'm like what's happening right before this scene they gave me the word (laughs) and like a sort of situation what was the word and i was like but i need to know like what's leading up to this like what i was like where like my character is clearly a pa or whatever and what was the word those are tough auditions for me when Those I'm like, tough. I have can you a hear word me? and no Can you context. hear me? Is there, a, is there a delay? What was the word? Oh, um, oh, I should remember. Oh, yeah, it's one oh. word. <clears throat> God, what was it? It was one word. There, there are thousands I cannot of remember. words. There's I a lot of words out there in the world. The yeah, trauma, the trauma I so it. have you been doing anything else to make ends meet? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I've worked for... I mean, God, I worked f- for so many nonprofits. Um, oh. I worked for Project Angel Food in LA. Oh, yeah. I don't know, they mm-hmm. prepare and deliver free meals to people with serious illnesses all over LA mm-hmm. County. There's brother and sister oh, organizations so cool. not connected that do that in major cities everywhere. And um, I worked there for like three or more years. Then I left there to work for the SPCA LA. Um, the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals that originated Mm -hmm. in London, by the way, in the 1800s. And it was at the time to protect children and animals because there were no child labor, you know, like you worked from the time you were born, basically in early turn of the century times. Did you meet Sarah McLaughlin? Yeah. Well, I, I have a problem with the ASPCA and Sarah McLaughlin only because, and I'm going to put this out there because it is important. The ASPCA, the American Society for the Prevention oh. of Cruelty to Animals, is based in New York, pretty much only serves New York, and yet they advertise nationally, which I get upset by oh. because in there are SPCAs all across the country that are they're run on donations. And when you advertise nationally as if you help nationally and as if we're all connected and there's, it's an umbrella organization that all the but little- It only goes to New to. York? That is a lie. Wow. And that does not end. And these, yes. the SBCALA has to raise money from local people, like local companies, local, like that's how you get by. Wow. And they advertise nationally New York wow. and they have a, skyscraper with a helicopter oh. like they're good <laughs> like they don't need the money they can afford commercial airtime they don't need the money right um give it to your local spca or humane society that is my public service announcement okay i should do a commercial like to and shut get paid them down. yeah they At have pay you a lot of money to do a commercial. they have programs wow, that are okay. how that they get a away but you're not if you have a problem with an animal in your neighborhood Unless you live in New York, they're not going to be. They're not going to help you. You hear that ASPCA? Yeah. Pull your finger I mean, out. Clean up your act, ASPCA. Yeah, you clean it. Up. Clean up. Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. I hope you're hearing this podcast. She listens to this podcast. Well, she stopped. Sure. She stopped letting them She's, do her thing, and now they have good. other celebrities doing it. Well, whatever celebrities are with who are listening to this podcast, which I'm sure they all are. Yeah, make point. a proper commercial. Do it right <laughs> for all of the SPCAs. So, wow. how we've been talking for quite a while. Oh, uh, yeah, this is the longest podcast. You're going to have to edit. Just edit out all that abuse. All that, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut out the bulk and buy it. It'll just be a short conversation about the ASPCA. Just, just edit <laughs> out. Like, just, I'll just it. cut. Yeah, I'm going to cut that. Just all the negative just stuff. It. You know, it's Anything a bit dark. Help, I like to keep this light. I want to keep it oh, light. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's just 20 minute conversation about the ASPCA versus the SPCA. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> um, no, but I want to, I do want to punch forward. So is Mark happy with his career thus far? Oh, no, I'm pretty sure it's over. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not sure I how to make brighten that up. Like, to, polish that, Jay. Get your, get your brass polish out. Well, I mean, at the pandemic, I mean, with all the mental health and other things I was dealing with during it, I mean, we shut down for so long. 
and yeah and and roles became much more like the roles available became much more limited and yeah. then we had two strikes immediately following the yeah, pandemic yeah. and i have not worked in what like four years yeah. i did that's not i did three short films where's the there it is three mm -hmm. short films um during that time like that i did for free for, yeah. for friends and friends, friends of stuff. friends yeah i'm the lead in all of them it's not like i was like oh yeah i'll, I'll be a right. store Bus clerk boy. that has a line and you're short yeah. i'm like yeah i'll do it because i want to keep working and i needed i needed work that looks like me for my reel like i you may have noticed, are you sticking so with that look what is what's going on with that look what are you doing I don't know. I think it was a mental break during the pandemic that I have not corrected. I mean, we all did that. My hair was down to my shoulders, by the way, post pandemic. Was and, it really? You did uh, it yeah. too. Oh yeah. Yeah. It I was pretty common. Did. I noticed a lot of people grew beards and long hair. And then I, I would have kept it, but I wanted to go back to the acting and I thought maybe I'll get a couple right. of games and that's of thrones thing. Like, or something. I complain will come. about my career not being there, but you really have to be truthful about it and be like, well, there's a lot of factors. Yes. There's all of what I said, but there's yeah. also, I drastically changed my look because I wanted different roles. I was going in for the same shit. All, yeah, sorry, I get it. Same but... stuff all the time. And, Whack. and I, and I wanted it to be a little different. Can and I, I give you a little, can I give you some, different. some professional advice from an older. Oh God. Oh, I look older in it. No, no, I'm older than you. So you have to take my oh, advice yeah, is yeah. what I'm saying. Go You've back. Been on yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ch and I've right changed before my before I went to visit my friends in London and I got to watch it on their TV. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And they were everybody was excited. Yeah, yeah. Doctor. Last time I got to see you in person. That was the last job I ever did. Um actually <laughs> that was the last time I worked. Uh yeah, we got to see each other in person when, when Mark was here in London. It was great. Good times. Uh and you had good friends, nice friends. Um change your look back. You gotta change your look back. Yes, and I'm aware. I'm gonna do a couple little things with it now. No, just I have a couple go. Jesus videos I want to make. Oh, I see. I okay, right, yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah. A couple of my. So I have an uncle in Maine who I just got to visit again for the first time ever, who has basically had this look his entire life and is known all throughout Old Town Maine and beyond as right. Hippie Hank, and right. has been ever since I was a kid. And he's hilarious. And I'm going to start doing videos of him as a character. Just, I got so many stories while I was there mm -hmm. that none of which I'm sh are probably true. Like when President Ford punched Clint Eastwood in the face for him. Um, because he, because I guess according to him, Clint Eastwood was a draft dodger and somehow they were all in the same place at the same time. And that, that like happened. Yes. I recorded it. So Hippie Hank punched Clint Eastwood in the face for for Harold yeah. for Gerald Ford. Asked Hippie exactly. Hank. Okay, okay allegedly. Yeah, that's wow. that is legendary. It's gonna be a great little true. story video. Yeah. Okay, get all that done and then shave and, then I'm gonna, and a I'm haircut, gonna be back two bits. Old Mark. You gotta I'll go back. Younger. Yeah, you look younger. You gotta get back to basics. Great. Your skin looks fabulous. Skin I don't know what you're doing. Fabulous. I don't know what your routine is, but just keep it up. <laughs> And diet it's and diet and your hair and your teeth. Now. But it's that's terrible. the thing that people understand you as. If you if you were to get something where they go, can you hip your you know, and you go, yeah, yeah, I can grunge myself up, and then you get known for that, that's fine. But right now, the clean cut, uh, baby face kind of thing it was Versatile. working for you, yeah. And well, yeah. was it um, to some degree? Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I guess I, I was working. This is, I, I'm, I'm saying. But everybody's working less right now. Everybody's working less. We're all pivoting. We're all trying to find different. There's so um, many articles in all the trades about how Hollywood is, I think, because of these new contracts, like has to change yeah. everything they've been doing and making They're looking less for more reality. Now. Yeah, reality. Because they TV. have to pay people what they're worth, which yeah. must be so hard for them. It's difficult <laughs> not to make you know trillions instead of billions and i mean of just like you look at those executive salaries and you're just like really wow. yeah insanity but insanity. all the people you meanwhile people, all the people everybody identifies with hollywood which is the actors who yeah. are on camera that you're not gonna pay them. yeah poor mark doesn't even have a roof over his head 
Yeah. Oh, that's let's how talk bad about that. Let's talk happened. about that real quick because I yeah, saw yeah, that yeah. Today. real quick, and like, then we'll finish. It with has you. been a I'm gonna help you. Of things going wrong in my life. Yeah, since the pandemic, and then not earning enough. And a lot of my friends were just like, "You need it. You need. You need to have another. You need to have another full time job." Um, which are you working full? Are either of you guys working like full time other jobs? Like, is it not full time? No, no, and. I no, mean, you like, no, no, yeah. no, I pick up enough acting work. Yeah. Yeah. I don't anymore. Audio and books. I need to change it. So what voice. I did was I was feeling like I couldn't stay in LA anymore. Um, and, and that I was dealing with too much to, to get a full-time job for sure. So I decided to fix up my house and lease it for a year. Mm. travel the country, okay, see people, try mm. acting things in different areas. I had several places I could land and live cheaply or for free um, because I definitely wasn't making enough from the renting of my house. That is actually You were able to buy a house on, an actor's, on your actor's salary? No, by being hit by a car at the DMV. So oh, I was right. able yeah, to okay. afford a house and then having roommates Lucky. for 20 years. So right. I was a landlord. I was still working a lot of other jobs when I had all the roommates pre-pandemic and everything. In the pandemic, the two uh, the two roommates that were I was still living with and I was airbnb being a room occasionally. Um, one had lived with me for five years, one for seven. Like They were very close friends, were still friends. Um, but it was a shock when they moved out. And I tried, I was like, okay, I got to try do new tactics. I don't want to live with all these people anymore, even though I love them. And uh, so that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to fix up the house. That became a full-time job because I couldn't afford to pay people to do it for me. Yeah, yeah, right. And so. except for the things that definitely had to have that done. And um, as soon as I left LA, we got tenants. I like them. Like they seem to be together and it was a family i felt like my house had enough rooms it would be a good family house and um almost as soon as right before i left even everything started to go wrong like um oh my god no. so, so there were some damages from the tenants um that i noticed even before i left la which was i was worried about but at this point we're in nothing else you know can right. change and I go on my way and the dryer broke right before I left, which was an under counter. They don't make them anymore. It took me months to, to get a repairman to do it because the only other option is those European ones that you guys have with no exhaust that it yeah, takes condenser. two hours to dry this much clothing. <laughs> yeah. It's and, a condenser um, dryer. We, and, uh, we don't use dryers. Oh, yeah. we have a dryer. Oh, I have a dryer. I have a tumble dryer. dryer. Yeah. Have a so, dryer. Um, anyway, of course, so that I'm a human like being. Twice I'm... as much as what a normal, like what a new dryer would live cost. like an animal without oh, a dryer. More than you double, and um, and okay. so, and that was just the beginning. Before the roof started leaking the roof during caved the in. last rainstorm, the first rainstorm we made go. it. The last two did not make it, and. Um, so, so everybody, this is, this is, this is good. Mark has just come up with a GoFundMe. I'm going to help. Yeah, you. This is I'm, what help. I I'm not like going to give you money, down. by the way. That's not yeah. going to happen, obviously. And it's really, I stayed specific to the roof as far as what, because you I didn't ask for money for the dryer. The cost of the roof is double what I paid last time I had to get it done because construction has gone so much up during the pandemic. So here it says, yeah, yeah. Materials and construction. Materials, labor, everything. It's astronomical, and so I Mark, couldn't. I couldn't do it. I didn't know what else to do. I'm like horribly. I know, and it's not. It's not in your nature to ask. I know. Oh, I hate. I'm part of my problem all through the years is that I hate asking for help. Yeah. At all I from know. anyone, and yeah. I think that, and that was definitely part of the Ron trauma was that I didn't trust asking people. The people I was supposed to were supposed to help me that I was literally paying to help me. I could not trust. Right. And so that is an issue that I think I still have a little bit of, like even now being aware that that's what was happening. Like God, I it's just such a don't... growing process, isn't it? Yeah. Like thing. you realize how it just branch. It just is like this virus that branches out and is affecting you in all these ways. You didn't even know. Yeah. Has acting helped you at all? Absolutely. I think, 
I think the more you put yourself in other people's shoes, the more empathy you have, the more everything you have. Like I even understand, like I empathize with how messed up all those abusers are. Yeah, like I understand yeah. that like Ron's so damaged. Yeah. Like he kind of lost his youth because he started drinking heavily at such a young age. I don't know if you remember him telling us about mm -hmm. He was in like that national competition for acting and came in first or second, like when you're young, mm -hmm. but he was already drinking at that time. And like, I'm assuming that's what sent oh, his, his father didn't love him. He was but I'm little... like, why am I making excuse? Like none of that's an excuse for what you did. I know, but, but there I is something that, to be said like, for not damage punishing. can create a monster yeah. Yeah. or it can create somebody who can literally understand anybody else's pain. Yeah and and know and be good enough to not be that way themselves and i do hope or that ron somewhere wherever he really? is has kind of learned some kind of lesson or has grown himself because deep down there's a good guy in there he was abused by his father let down you know he's a little red-headed queer you know kid and that, uh, and i hate I, I mean i hate to keep pointing out this but like an unattractive gay man an unattractive and that's a gay man thing yeah. in our community that's a huge like, yeah yeah i mean just not handed any but handed it's not know. great but we're, we're great. just as bad as as the rest of the world is yeah. judging women and their bodies right right, right. Them due to themselves constantly yeah 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 so maybe there's some some ray ron if you're listening feel free to get in touch uh we'll Oof. uh we'll help you sort some things out <laughs> Yeah, don't we? don't don't get in touch with we, Mark. Will obviously, we, will we take advantage of the no time limit clause? On there might be something that that's <laughs> something there. I I often think about my position with Loyola Marymount and how things were, uh, you know, how how my I mean, career worry, could have been different if. Yeah, uh, which we can't do. Everything happened, and it happened, and what it happened. It? It's all yeah. it is. We grow. Like we, we can't stronger. change it. We can't go back. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. But if it's not happening to anyone else, this is the critical thing. Okay, before we go, I'm going to help Mark out. Now, here's his GoFundMe. It's Mark C. Could use a little bit of help. Okay, a lot. A lot. You have some, you have some quite uh, generous friends so far. Out of a $30,000 goal, you have gotten right. almost five grand. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I haven't done anything since I posted it like four days ago. You like haven't I done anything. It, I noticed and then, that, yeah. Speaking of age and all of the things that come with that, I had a, my first colonoscopy yesterday. Um, oh, God. Like well, you know, this is already a two-hour podcast for us to talk about your colonoscopy. We're not getting into it, nor should we. Why, can why we post we the video, though? And colons. And can, we post, can we post the video <laughs> at some point? Um, the colonoscopy, I forgot. Yeah, a plethora of... <laughs> Fantastic topics for I've this been podcast. I've a lot the past few years. Oh my lot. god! <laughs> I'm over here polishing the glass. Yeah, right it's now. like there's wi the windows. Of the we're boat trying right to shed now. some light on this thing. Windex. <laughs> okay, let me just help help you out with this. Now you've mentioned now in your in your setup here. Now if you go to this, um, and we're gonna post the link for you. We're gonna see if we can get some uh, from our listeners. Yeah. Um, Do you have a but, big audience? Does anybody watch this? No, listeners? nobody listens anyway. Okay, so good, that's, that's not gonna favorite. help. But but. I, I, I will. But we'll do a, it anyway. I'll do it anyway. No, I appreciate <laughs> it. Chance. You might get a twenty dollar bill out of it. <laughs> um, but here's 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 a couple things I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend. Now you've got the the long so, ha, so, sob story, which is great. You know, right? Yeah. I, my my chin quivers. The single tear. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. You're <laughs> acting. <laughs> yeah. But I, I you know it's there. Um, but where's your giveaways? Oh, I'm gonna do that. That was part of the reason we mentioning the colonoscopy. Oh, oh, my friend posted an old picture of me. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. That's a great. Picture. I was at his house and he had all these funny props. Right. Um, but um, you've super got to give some. Friends. You've got to and give some giveaways away. You have I'm super gonna, generous friends, I'm but gonna, without. I had now no here, time. can I get? I I know. I had but a colonoscopy I, yesterday. I put this up four days ago. <laughs> and how I know that was a fun time. And now that you've done, you know. So do you think should I should I. As one of the giveaways, well, like all of my paperwork and stuff for my colonoscopy, I have a band aid that was no, in my IV no, that has some no, blood on. no, nothing to do. Clone me. Nobody they wants anything to do with your colonoscopy. <laughs> Let's just drop the subject. It's starting to get a little. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, 
I'm gonna do giveaways and offer people things like voicemail messages, like, you know, video messages. They can ask me anything and I'll publicly answer it. There you go. Kind of but it's, yeah. I think it's gotta also be house related. So I'll give you some ideas. And yeah. maybe at a, at a price point, you know, 50 gets you yeah, this, yeah, yeah. 100 gets yeah. you that, 500 gets you that. House party, under the roof, house party. Come. Under the new, oh, that's a great idea. Thank you. Host it at the house. After um, you get an invitation, when, right? Once the when the roof is done, yeah. and yeah. and uh, maybe that's a hundred dollar donation or more, gets you an invitation to the under the roof house party, and you know you go you go all out for that. Also, that's a great idea. Thank I know that's that's what I do. I <laughs> I come I I have great ideas. Um, updates about yeah. what is what's happening. So. You're gonna walk people. If you get a donation, then you get put onto an email list. You've got to go for it here. You can't just yeah, ask. Yeah. You got you got as much money out of people as you. No, can. no, I know. I felt bad, but I felt like I had to start the campaign. Yeah, fair enough. As soon as possible, especially with my birthday coming up, and so I was like, send cash, that, don't send gifts. Get me some money, like right. birthday donations. But yeah, I was yeah. like, I need to get it up. I and think then you've I'm gonna, milked. I, like, I think you've milked the cow as dry as it's gonna get. And it's pretty good. I don't think I your your value right now to your friends is five grand. I think that's amazing. Like I don't think I. Well, I also out. I'll point out I posted it nowhere except Instagram. I never even yeah. got to posting it to Facebook and, and Instagram Twitter won't do a link. By X. the way, it won't do a link. So post it on Facebook and stuff. But when you post it yeah, on yeah, Facebook, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make levels and layers and stuff, and you're gonna yes, offer. Yes. So make it of of value. You know, you'll yes, get yes, and and make it fun and quirky. You know. I also up. have like all these skills that I did. Like I was telling you, I was fixing up the house. Like I made a railing for my stairs that is cool out of natural wood and yeah, shit. And I, and I made these art floors um, that are sort of this collage style that I could do for anybody anywhere. There you so go. There's also like the high price yeah. point ones where I can be like, no, artistic I stuff. Place, I will come to your place and, and do I something do for you. Something. Yeah, 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 some, yeah, yeah. Something in trade. I will make something for you. A coffee cup that, or a T-shirt that says, "I gave Mark Cirillo a thousand dollars, and all I got was this stupid coffee mug," and he That's got a roof on his head. You know, really stuff like that. Idea. He's got a roof yeah, over his head, big, and big. I'm, you know, a rooftop party, roo under the roof party, some bar big barbecue. Come and celebrate. You know, that's that's gonna get the crowds in. Yeah. I'm going to have to start. Oh, you'll have to be a bunch of weird control. strangers coming to your house that gave you a hundred bucks. You'd be like, oh, hey, Fernando. Yeah. How creepy is that? I could Where be like, oh, thank goodness this guy gave me so much money and I just invite a stalker into my home. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe a dinner, an evening. It's all going to end very tragic. <laughs> Romantic candlelit dinner. Uh, I always go dark. I always go dark. <laughs> Best of luck, though, to getting that fixed. Yeah. He needs a new uh, roof. Yeah. And they're Thanks. Sorry about that. I mean, I'm going to get by somehow anyway. But, you will. And I am working right now, I, but it's like teaching little kids gymnastics like a few Aww. times a week. And now they want me to like run this website store. And I'm very, I have a lot of bizarre skills because I've, like, if you ever saw that show Blown Sideways Through Life or read it, it's so brilliant by Claudia Shearer. It's about like the 700 jobs she's had while trying to support herself as an actor. I right. recommend it to all oh, actors. Okay. Great. And she would just quit all the time as soon as there was a problem because she'd be like, or get fired because right. she didn't care about those jobs. Right. Like, she cared about acting yeah. and writing her plays. But I highly recommend that. Cool. Great. Well, on that note, because ultimately we're all passionate about acting. We're all passionate about the craft and the art. I think you're very talented. I've always thought that. Very funny and uh, charismatic on screen. So check him out in one of those very niche uh, bad gay movies. They're all, they're everywhere. You can't avoid them. <laughs> uh, there's there's good thing you can watch Wet Hot American Summer the watch. the series reboot on Netflix. But it, and if you're looking for me, just treat it like a drinking game. <laughs> right. Because Every time I will you see me, to pop keep popping up, up popping up, and you will get very drunk in his little yellow shorts or whatever. Yes, yeah. exactly. Very identifiable, even deep in the background. We're going to keep an eye out for you. And I want to see you back on screen soon without the Grizzly Adams biker look. Yeah, nobody likes time. it. Everybody I think it's time it. to go. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate you, Jay. There it is again for all you on YouTube. You can see there he is in full That regalia. is actually a really good photo, by the way. 
It's a good photo. Erin Newmeyer, I got to tell you, in LA, uh, E Photo LA, I think she goes by. I've ever since I got one of the best headshots I ever got, like in the early 2000s right. with her. I've never gone to anyone else. And the one time my manager made me go to someone else, the pictures were terrible. It's all about finding. So you're giving a free plug on, on our show here for some other photographer. I don't get a, I don't even get a kickback. Go ahead. What was it again? E. Um, well, if you're in London and actors, Todd can do things for you. Which yeah, you I'll take care of you here. No, but for, for those in LA, Mark, you might, might get a free headshot out of it. If you plug her one more time, who was it? E? Uh, Aaron Newmeyer or E photo LA on okay. most of the social medias. Anything, anything else to say, Mark, before you go? Before we all who else can I promote that is not yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I got, but that's the thing. Yeah, I got, I got, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in, I'm New York based basically now because I'm yeah. just over the line, in right? Connecticut, you know. All right, we'll get back into it. Get back in the game. Yeah, I'd love to I've see been you on going screen. To New York. I've gotten a couple auditions. I've gone Good. into New York. But... And th thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, man, that was really brave. Honestly, Jay, you've been great. <laughs> I, yeah, it's been I, great. I, I, Here's a I, small clap for Jay. Oh, God. Thank you, Jay. Andy's been great as well. He's had to listen to that for two hours just sitting there doing Oh, nothing. man. So sorry, buddy. Coffee after coffee. No, it was great. It was a bit long, folks. We understand. But uh, if you, you heard the podcast, you understand why. Um, yeah. And Thank we you, could man, probably. We, yeah, we could go on and on. We'll have you back sometime. When you know what? When you book something and we get back and the look changes, we're gonna have you back. We want to hear more. Oh, that's nice. And then yeah. we'll really talk about acting really? and stuff. Jay can talk about. <laughs> no, we don't need to talk about Jay. He's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Mark. Love you, buddy. Great to see you. Thanks I love so you much. Too. Thank you guys so much for having yeah. me on. That's so nice. We're yeah. gonna do our little wrap up. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Spread it far and wide. Plug us to that's your great. friends. There you go. All right. Yeah. See you soon, buddy. See you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Man. Ciao. Ciao. All right. That was all the right. great, the all powerful, all wonderful Mark Cirillo. What'd you think? Um, well, right now my brain hurts a little bit. Um, cause yeah. that was uh very long and also hot hard, uh, and like not a not yeah. a I'm angry at you way, but um, no, there's a lot like to process a, there. That's yeah. Uh, if I were to say it lightly, drama. <laughs> but um, that's the light. That's the like. That's the light way of saying it. Because um, yeah, that was that was. You warned me of heavy stuff. And yeah, uh, long time right. coming. Mark has never really opened up fully publicly about all that stuff. Uh, nor have I, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, and it, so it was just sort of a time. He, we, we were, we had a, a reunion two years ago, and uh, we talked like a reunion with all the, all the gang from theater, Loyola, and uh, and we talked a bit. And at the time, I said, "Man, uh, we're gonna do something here about this, and we'll talk some more." And so, finally, uh, here we are, um, and it's in a very public forum. But I think it, yeah. it needs to be said. I, well, if nothing, yeah, if not, yeah, 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 no, you go, no, you go. No, you go. If nothing else comes of it, I just want people, young people especially, who to understand that, you know, you've got to be aware that there are people out there that will take advantage of you still today, um, put you in a vulnerable position. It's it's a, it's a real thing. And when you're an actor, you're constantly sort of making yourself vulnerable. So you have to be um, aware of who you can trust and how and when um, and just be kind of vigilant because you can see it can happen to the best of us um, and it can affect you so any last words yeah no no more that's Lift a good up. that's a good that's a good reminder to the that's audience good. and a good thing to close on yeah this is even better the offstage acting theme song ah. that was great well done <laughs> good stuff man thank you for being there with us while we went through Thanks all that for stuff sharing yeah i can tell it was uh yeah thanks for sharing yeah 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 it's good and thank you all to the audience for being with us on the offstage acting podcast we'll see you next time okay that's a long one i know but i didn't want to cut it 
I decided not to cut it, not to break it. I think it all needed to be said and shared. And isn't Mark a delight? That's it for now. Remember, check out offstageacting.com for classes, courses, coaching, and more about the podcast. Until next time, get acting.